For July the 2nd, 2021, we talk about Mario Golf Super Rush, SNKRX, and we ask you which games you want to like but can't get into. Welcome to Level 377. My name is Cole Ross. I'm Dennis Furia. I'm Jella Prendes. And I'm Ben Merkel. And you are listening to The Level. It's a podcast for people who love video games. Going to get out in front of two audio things right here. Uh, if I sound like I'm in a cavern, it's because I am. Coming to you live from <laughs> beneath the Earth's... No, no um, I, uh, I don't have any soundproofing up in this room. Because I had hanging up with the when the paint's still so fresh, so mm. we're, we're we are we are rocking it. We're we're rocking it unfoamed. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> it sounds echoey to me. Nobody else probably notices that. The raw dog of the ears. Oh, oh no! no. <laughs> Too far. I'll just see myself out. Yeah, please, man, not even a, less than a minute, dude. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and and also, I'm not saying this to make him feel bad, but there is a slight buzz on Dennis's on Dennis's track. We're rolling with it, so don't yeah. uh, if if you, if you don't notice, then it, then it, then it, then it's a bonus. Also, hey Jala, how's it going? Hi, I've been in Foundation Repair Land, yeah, and I also injured my wrist, and so I'm only just now starting to sort of, kind of get back to some of my activity. That's good. But yeah, the whole, the, the Foundation Repair was a lot worse. They 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 they, they, they picked mm. up your house and dropped it bad, and then and and then the pipe the pipes <laughs> broke. Well, that was one of the various things that occurred. But yeah, like 31 piers on the perimeter, 11 inside the house. They tore up the floor. They tore up a lot of stuff. They broke some of my stuff. Oh, God. Um, but they got it all mostly done in one day, at least the, the pier part of it. And then mm-hmm. they also broke some pipes because they ended up lifting the house several inches. Um <laughs> Because basically the house was already settling, but then Harvey, Hurricane Harvey, when it blew through, it saturated everything so bad that basically the house was pitching forward. Uh-oh. So, hmm. um, yeah, like they had to raise it mm-hmm. and to level everything out, and they had to make it more stable by putting some inside the house. The flooring is still torn up some, and we're still trying to deal with that, but mm-hmm. it has been mm-hmm. kind of a nightmare. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> Don't ever get foundation repair unless you are gone and somebody else is going to be dealing with it. Yeah, because it's a nightmare. especially the cleanup, dear God. Oh yeah, we're still dealing with that. But oh. yeah, and the, the wrist injury was a separate ordeal. That was mm-hmm. when I was trying to fight with the yucca plants that uh, my dad had planted a long time ago that had died in the freeze, and we cut them back. But I needed to get the stumps out of the. Um, flower beds so that I could plant stuff in them eventually, like in the fall. And so I was trying to get some of them out. And then while I was pulling, a branch smacked my hand on the top of it and made it swell up real bad. And like, I don't know if I had fractured it, fractured part of my hand, or if I had just pulled a tendon. It was very sensitive and had, you know, Mm. like it still has some issues turning in certain directions but i do not have money to go to (laughs) the doctor to verify anyway all they would do is just put an ace bandage on it and give me some tylenol and tell me you know well if you have any more pain we can prescribe you know that's all they're gonna do so yeah yeah. try not to move it too much yeah yeah i'm just i'm not obviously not doing any poll and um i'm only just this week on like after three weeks of not doing anything with it Mm. Uh, i am starting to lift again very carefully and adjusting everything so it takes less stress on my wrist with a wrist wrap on um have you considered a wrist replacement or removal (laughs) and then just going full rayman where there's just a floating hand yeah yeah well actually doing the lifting the past couple of days has been really helpful because just like if you at a certain point if you don't move you know the area then it will take even longer to recover because you're not using it stretching it you're not getting a range of motion um, back yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so 
So anyway, so that's that's what's been going on in my world. How about you guys? What has everybody else been up to? I, I mean, I know that the joke is we always talk about the weather, but Ben, you've been you were you were in Portland this last weekend, and you yeah. already live in the Pacific Northwest, and I've seen yeah. some buck wild photos of like streets melting. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Y- yeah. Already- Chal already made the joke earlier where it's like I brought the Texas weather with me. It's like, <laughs> a, yeah, but it's like it was gotten to the one teens uh, in Portland on Sunday when I was there. And then it was it was in the hundreds in Seattle yesterday um, up until I think like eight o'clock is like I specifically just stayed at work and just was like hanging out, like watching yeah. like Twitch and stuff like that. Because it's like, well, I'm not going to walk home and be in a yeah. really hot apartment. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, and in Portland, it was, like, very, like, eerie because that city is not built for those types of temperatures and nobody mm-hmm. really has, like, AC units. And so yeah. on, like, uh, Sunday, it's like the streets were empty, rightfully so, because mm-hmm. um, it's so hot. But it's, like, it was just weird seeing, like, this, like, ghost town and then, like, feeling that, like, Vegas type of weather, but in Portland. No. And it was just, yeah. like, very surreal. Um yeah, and yeah, and I visited like when we were there, we visited a couple friends' houses, and like everyone was kind of trying to have their own strategy for like how to stay cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the person I was visiting, they just decided they were just going to hang in, hang out in the basement all day. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah. a separate separate unit, completely like cool, not a lot of you know, like yeah. So that's what worked for them, but yeah, really, uh, really weird, I guess. Yeah, that so. sounds fucking awful. Yeah. I yeah. remember I remember several years ago, a friend of mine who moved over to Portland was like, oh, my God, Jolly, you would love it over here because the weather and this and mm-hmm. that and all this other stuff about how much how much I would love it over there. And now it's like, you're hotter than I am. <laughs> wow. And you yeah. guys are not. It's kind of like when we had the the February freeze here and it's like. Okay, these temperatures are nothing for any place that is prepared, but mm-hmm. Houston, yeah. Texas is not one of those places that is prepared. In fact, none of Texas was. Right. Um, so, <laughs> you know, yeah. that was that was quite a bit. That was quite a lot. So, yeah, yeah like I I feel you and um you can bundle up when it's cold, but when it's hot, there's only so much you can do and so much you can take off before there's just like nothing else you can do it's inescapable. anymore. So yeah. One yeah. thing that was interesting too is like a lot of businesses were like shutting down and just sending workers home. Um but the thing that was interesting about that is like a lot of those places have AC. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. it's kind of like people are kind of put in this weird situation where it's like, okay, everywhere out every public place is now closing. So now it's like I really got to fit in for myself or I really got to figure out how to, how to work this out at my house. So. Yeah. And also if yeah. I rely on transit, how am I going to get home actually? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. God. Nightmare. So, yeah. And then like heat, uh, I had a realization it's kind of like coronavirus where it like disproportionately affects like older people in terms of like health risks. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, and that's, yeah, here, um, after they did the foundation work, our AC unit has been making some noises and like a lots of noises really loud. And um, it's an older unit to begin with that we've known is both too small for our house and also needs to be replaced. So at this point, we're just like, please chug along for my parents because my dad cannot breathe once it gets too hot and humid. He mm-hmm. physically cannot breathe. So it's like please just survive long enough because right now the ac guys won't even do the duct work and all the other stuff that you know like they can replace the unit if they can find it but even the parts and stuff are on a shortage so it's like you know that's a a big concern so wow you know we're running Uh, a window ac unit with some fans blowing down the hall for the primary source of ac so and for a whole house that's not going to cut it yeah uh uh-uh. uh. No. So my office has a window AC unit for the small, like 400 square feet that it is. Yeah. <laughs> so my office is nice and, and a regular, normal temperature in it, but like, boy, the house is maybe not so much. No. So, I mean, like, if worse comes to worse, it just means that my dad will have to live in my office. <laughs> we have to yeah. put him out here so he can have like a, a decent temperature, but there's no running water because the pipes broke in February <laughs> from the freeze. <laughs> or we're so, doing, we're doing good. We're doing, we're doing great. Yeah. 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 Oh, 
So, I mean, aside from the heat stuff, Ben, you got anything cool going on? Uh, oh, I was gonna say. Uh, so Did I went you down to Portland. Cool on purpose. That was terrible. <laughs> no, no, I, I really didn't. I didn't intend to do okay. that. Okay. <laughs> uh, outside of the uh, heat wave and stuff, we uh, I went down there for a midsummer festival, and so oh yeah, uh, yeah. So it was a lot of fun. We played this game called Viking Chess or Cube. I love and it Cube. Was like, yeah. It, it, oh, I had never. Yeah, I think I'd heard about this once before, but I never played it before. So this is a that thing that kinda... we played at. Uh, with a, it was like big at a, uh, the agency that I worked at the the, the studio. Oh, there was just one person, okay. you know, who you know brought it to whenever we had a picnic or a function, uh, things like that. And like I have a set, although like it's unsanded, so it's miserable to use. Uh, yeah, I, I need to actually just buy a to, to to buy a set. But this is one of uh, one of many games in the uh, backyard toss genre. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but safer than lawn darts. Uh, we still <laughs> we still had an injury, but it was not fatal or anything. So yeah, you're just throwing um, a wooden baton at uh, little wooden towers. Yep, and it is quite a satisfying feeling to get it to connect. Uh, yeah, that's what we did, realized did, playing it over the weekend. You get that wood block sound of the of the mallet hitting the hitting the block. Ugh, mm-hmm. It's so good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Stop being a coward and play it with an axe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people are if people are looking this up. I I want more people to know what this is. So like, it's it's just it's just more common. K U B B is is, is yeah. how it's spelled, and the sets are pretty uh pretty inexpensive. Yeah. Is this like because of the pandemic we have uh, exhausted every other at home game and are digging furiously for new ones? Well, so I think there's like a Swedish tie with it, and that's why they like wanted to play it. It, it seemed like it was a mm-hmm. tradition type thing, yeah. but I I did not look that up, so I'm not 100 percent sure on that. Yeah, I, I think it's Scandinavian, uh, you know, just because they they call it you know another name for it. Like you said, Ben is Viking chess, so I think it is mm-hmm. something. I have no idea how the person who I learned about it from learned about it. It's fun. And, you know, I I like these, you know, go out in the backyard and throw stuff games. You know, big fan yeah. of the big fan of yeah. uh, ladder ball. Specifically, that one's good. Not so great at cornhole or bag toss or whatever. Ooh, but you're from the Midwest. I'm I, sure you're like naturally above average in the uh, country, uh, country may, scale. May, it may be. It may be. I, th- I think that it's just one of those. It's one of those things where like. You know, if you oh. if, if you grow up in the, if you grow up in a cold place, you're going to know how to skate better than somebody, even if you're bad. I wonder. At it. I wonder if you could make like a Midwest equivalent of like chess boxing and do like euchre cornhole or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never learned to play euchre. What? <laughs> like people have taught Tisk. me. People have you guys. You guys have taught me like several times. Then I just never. I never internalized the rules. This is an oh, act wow. of violence at this yeah. point. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. Jal, if there's any room in the birthday party schedule, there's, there's one thing that we could add. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, yeah. This, even going back to going back to high school, I was just a uh, I was a casual observer of euchre. Hmm. I was. I, was I a, don't even know what you're talking about. So it, it's like a card game. It's a. It's like a, okay. It, like cribbage or uh like the uh multiplayer game of hearts it's like a trump trump card pair and also two other things i've also never played because yeah, like yeah. the best i think i could muster is solitaire like, yeah, I, yeah. Don't, I don't i don't know <laughs> my grandparents played a lot of card games because they were from minnesota but right like, right you know, like the only thing I ever actually saw them play, you know, by the time I came around was uh, solitaire. So yeah. I apologize. I also no, I don't it's, know. It's it, it is it, like <laughs> euchre is a decidedly Ohio phen- phenomenon. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You, you were not expected to know how to play. Okay. Cole, on the other hand, <laughs> right, right. I, 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 I grew. I grew oh, this is a failing. Yeah, <laughs> your, no, no. Your I know. card is revoked. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I've only lived here for thirty three years. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> oh man! Uh, man, it's been forever since since I thought about Kube. I need to get the sander out and finish up, finish that up, um, finish the, the 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 set that I have. Anyway, uh, that sounds cool. Uh, Dennis, how about you? Yeah, I got. I don't. Even, I don't know whether to laugh or cry about this one. Um, but as you guys know, I'm the stay at home parent right now for three very very noisy boys. Um, they they like to assert themselves, we'll say, and it's mm-hmm. just a, a noisy household in general. 
And so Jen casually, she got a package in the mail. She's like, oh, yeah, I saw an influencer talking about this. I thought I'd get them. Just see if you like them. Um, and she got me, like, noise reduction earbuds. And so, okay. like, think earplugs. Earplugs. It looks like uh, just like an earbud you would put in your ear. But it's designed to, like, take the edge off of loud sounds without muting out anything quieter. Yeah. 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 That's what uh, I used because of my, my dad and his breathing stuff. Because, like... I, I can't sleep unless I have them in my ears. Right. So, yeah. So you're that, like, like turning volume down on life? Yes. Yeah, basically. <laughs> so that means super noisy things. You're fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and like in a half hour of wearing them, I was like, oh my God, I, I don't know how I ever lived without these. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> they're great. Crap. And they're not um, expensive either. Like you can get them for a decent price. No, because I think it's literally like I looked at it. It's an earbud that's put on a little piece of plastic so it doesn't get lost down your ear. Like I, I don't think there's anything super technologically advanced going on here. So maybe, maybe it's just like I bought something that is said to be for this, so I have permission to do the thing now. Maybe. <laughs> um, but man, the shouting matches or the exuberant play. Uh-huh. Um, are are a little a little less um overwhelming now um, <laughs> and it's it's one of those things i i was talking in uh the the parents channel of the slack that we have um and and said at one point like you know the saving grace of parenthood especially when you start to have multiple kids is just that anything starts to feel normal if you're in it 24 7 right and so it's like oh how do you adjust to having three kids and it's like you just you just do have three kids and there's nothing you can do about it. So it starts to feel normal. Mm-hmm. Um, and so even, even having that lightened in, in a very small way um, was, was a surprising amount of relief. Mm-hmm. So yeah. uh, noise reduction earbuds, uh, mm-hmm. a thing that I, nice. I would probably make sure to pull out whenever someone comes to the door, but will be <laughs> yeah. my saving grace. Did you like, that's, did you that's te- a good policy in general. <laughs> 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 did you did you test them? Did you say, okay, boys, I need you to stand in the kitchen while I'm you know over here at this desk. I need you to, and scream scream like scream like the house is on fire, boys. Scream like the house yeah. is on fire, and then go, 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 see if you could hear them. I, I did not need to ask them to do that. They provide those <laughs> services, so so you so you can hear that they are yelling, but it does not pierce like it did before. Yeah, when it's like, it doesn't muffle or like make it harder to understand. It just it's like negative eighteen decibels. I think. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, is is what it does. And it's it's like it's it is on the packaging. It's like for concerts and and motorcycles. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like no, this is for my life. Yes. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, Jen Jen has a, an eye watch thingy, uh, and there are multiple times where Barrett crying has set off the decibel warning. Where it's oh like, God. hey, this is not wow. a safe environment for your ears right now. So. <laughs> wow. wow. Legit, uh, a helpful thing to have. Yeah. Dang. Hey. Hey, it sounds like you found something that made uh, made a positive different difference in your life. Yeah, I never ever ever would have thought of, to ask for something like that, but uh, yeah. that's yeah. Small positive differences are are all we can really scramble for right now. Yeah. Wow. Well, if I would have known, I would have told you about them sooner because, like, I've been using them for the past couple of years or so, and <laughs> I, I can still wake up and hear my alarm. And if somebody's talking to me, like if Dave is talking to me in a normal voice, I can still hear him. I take mm-hmm. it out if he's talking to me, you know, for more than a second, but. You know, yeah, there They're are great. dozens of us. Dozens, <laughs> yeah. If there's reusable ones that I have, I think the company is Ear Peace, it's one word, but it's P E A C E. And um, they have little inserts that you can change how muffling it is, so hmm. you can you can kind of choose your severity of how, <laughs> how much you need dampened. Why are and your head inserts in? Are you not listening to me right now? <laughs> yeah, pretty much, but um. You know, in your case, you kind of need whatever it is you've got right now. <laughs> yeah. Mm. No, they make these for like motor motorcyclists and yeah, for uh, for concerts and stuff like that. Heavy duty. Yeah. Nice. I, I I don't I don't have an awful lot going on here. Mower's still broken. Uh, just uh, for 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 the boring stuff. I'm waiting for it to not be 95 degrees out before I go repair it. But I've got the blade. Mm. I've got all that. And also, my my rooms are painted. Yay. I am really Yay. looking forward to getting everything put back together. My, uh, it, it feels like the, the house has been torn apart for months. So, but that's uh, that, that that's 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 what's going on. I think that we should talk about some video games 
Um, because that's well, one of the reasons that we're here. So, why don't we do the regular kind of show? What with uh, the uh, grind, the multiplayer, and the unboss? And why don't we get started with the grind? The grind, where we talk about the games we have been playing over the past period of time or so. Jala, I will throw to you first since you have been away the longest. What have you been playing? So, uh, I've been playing a few things. I finished Viviette, so um, that was the horror game, the horror adventure kind of game that's in pixel art style, but kind of inspired by things like Resident Evil and the like. Uh, I discovered that Felice uh, is not your girlfriend, she's your sister. So when I kept on talking about the crazy girlfriend coming after you, it's not a girlfriend, it's a sister. I didn't remember anything being at all obvious about what her role was at the start and she looked like an adult so i just kind of assumed they were like whatever and anyway i only found out that she was a sister at the end of the game so apologies for anybody who really likes that game and was like it's not a girlfriend girlfriend sister i did not know why why, 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 who says it can't be both except for many governments and religions (laughs) and we're we're only one step up from kentucky here in ohio so (laughs) jeez Wow. Is, is that treated like a reveal or or is that just um no con- that's okay. just like a thing okay. um yeah. so so anyway um in the game i wanted to say because like i had mentioned how the puzzles were supposed to be more challenging or something and i have to say after playing through the whole game the puzzles are not hard per se but you do have to remember where things are and look at pretty much everything okay um the solutions vary from playthrough to playthrough so you can't look up a walkthrough and have like a single answer it's not going to have a single answer it's going to tell you well you got to look at this thing across the house or whatever so um an example of this is when you find the hand saw the description of the item says that it can saw fine wood there are mannequins somewhere else in the house which have fine wooden necks when you check them out it, that's what shows up in the text okay. so this is how you know to use the handsaw on the mannequins but you have to remember other things to figure out which mannequins you have to saw in the first place so you know like there's there's other things other clues and other places that tell you you know all of the information you need to know and um also, for another example, there are some metal cutters that you pick up. I think they were uh, inside of a greenhouse or something. But anyway, all the way across the, the property, over in a far corner, outside the house, and, you know, far from everything else is where you have to use that item. So, like, it's not necessarily even inside the house. Sometimes it's outside the house and you oh, have to wow. wander everywhere. Yeah, so that's why it it's a little bit of a frustration. So like um, if you play this and you don't know where something is used, you could just look it up. I, I you're not going to be losing anything other than some wandering around time. So it's not going to like, there are spoiler free walk brews out there. I know because I look them up because I don't have enough time and energy in my life around foundation repair to try to figure <laughs> everything out on my own. There's no shame in so, the game. Yeah. I am. I'm not ashamed to say that. So, There are good, bad, and very bad endings. And the good ending is only accessible if you've already, basically, if you've already played the game through and go back to replay it, or if you happen to read a walkthrough. Um, I checked on a spoiler-free walkthrough to make sure that I could at least watch multiple of the endings and not just default get the crappiest ending ever and then come on the show and be like, guys, it was terrible, (laughs) you know? Um, So the bad ending occurs if you save one or two people, because in this game, basically you play a protagonist who has gone to an island where there is an abandoned mansion that is supposedly haunted, and you go to picnic with a couple of your friends and also your sister. And then you all split up right at the beginning of the game, and then that's when the shit hits the fan and everybody disappears. And then you have to figure out what happened to them. And the first person that you come across, and basically the only person you come across in the game, is Felice, who is your sister. And she ends up becoming possessed in in you know by the the ghosts in the house and is chasing after you. She's Mr. Xing you the whole time. Mm-hmm. And so um the other two people, you don't know where the hell they went. And where they actually are is completely 
unintuitive. So like, there's no way that you can just figure out how to do the good ending coincidentally, unless oh. you were just super, super lucky or super paranoid one or the other. Um, but anyway, the bad ending occurs if you save one or two people, but not all three. The very bad ending occurs if you fail to save everybody. Like, you can't save your sister, you can't save your two friends. Uh, you have to, basically, the way to save everybody, like I said, uh, there's like one item in the earlier part of the game that you have to move in order to save your sister. You have to not move something else somewhere else to save one friend, and then you have to stop a saw in time to save the other friend. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and none of these things seem like they would necessarily be linked to anything. Like, I just put a video of, um, like, the, the saw thing. But, like, there's no no way that you would ever know that inside of that giant log there is anything. You know, like it's it's the, stupid. You, you would have no, uh, you would have no reason to even assume that, uh, except no. if you watched the scene and saw the outcome and then acted on it in the past. Well, because yeah, in the very bad ending, uh, they will explain like the um, well, in the very bad or the bad ending, if anybody dies, the investigator because this is this is all presented like a flashback. The main dude is in the hospital. He just wakes up like he's from a coma or from injuries or whatever. And then an inspector comes and says, your story is unbelievable, but tell us anyway, like what you remember or okay, whatever. Okay. And so then he tells the story of what happened. And then at the end of the game, it goes back to that scene in the hospital. And then the inspector's like, well, I don't believe you. And also, this is what happened. And then if anybody died, the inspector will tell you, this person was crushed like blah, blah, blah. And this person was hacked into whatever, whatever happened to them, you know? Um, so in any case, the good ending, basically, the, 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 the different endings are only varied in the exchanges at the very end between the main character and the inspector. Okay. So the good ending means that you understand your sister better and you vow to make her life easier because you were in denial of the fact that she can see ghosts. Okay. Okay. The bad ending, when your friends are killed, means that you go to jail pending investigation and trial for their murders and your sister is being watched over by the hospital. The very bad ben ending would be you go to jail pending for everybody's murder, but I, th I think... But, uh, or maybe you were executed, I'm not sure, because I can't find a video of the very bad ending on YouTube, or at yeah. least not in my cursory search of the amount of time I wished to invest in seeking this particular information. So, uh, but anyway, it's fun. It has good music. It has nice graphics. Mm -hmm. Although the gameplay is mostly extended because you are wandering around looking for stuff. So, if you know, um, again, like that frustration just becomes a barrier so in my opinion it's better to just pull up a spoiler free walkthrough and just yeah you know find no. the solution of where you need to go and you know it won't spoil the story for you and then you're you're good to go mm -hmm. but um even though i already outlined kind of what happens at the very very end of the game there's a lot of stuff that goes in between there and the main interesting thing is not the main character and his friends and his sister it's actually the ghosts and like what the whole deal is with the mansion in the first place. And that's yeah. the the main thrust of it. And that's where almost all of the energy is spent is on the main story of the former inhabitants of this house. Yeah. So uh, I would enjoy, I enjoyed it. I would recommend it to people, but just be aware of how much attention to detail you need to pay to the locations of things. And like, if you are playing screenshot the shit out of it so you can remember <laughs> like everything you look at is some solution to some puzzle and you don't want to have to come back to it later so take a screenshot and look yeah. at it later because yeah. you know again you can't just pull it up on the internet it's different playthrough to playthrough <laughs> so yeah uh that's good uh, to know it, that there is no detail too small uh to be noteworthy yeah. Yeah. yeah, you definitely want to look at everything because there's stuff that maybe that just looks like a random cabinet that you don't expect to have anything in there. But if you actually go look at it, there's a key in there or whatever. And like, OK, I, I didn't know that that was something I had to look at. But, you know, you don't want to be 
crawling the house looking for these things later. It's better to go ahead and just comb the room and try to push the button to investigate everything in the room while you're in there. And yeah. there are some legitimately creepy parts and the music and the sound um, sound effects and stuff. The sound work is really good. So I definitely recommend if you're playing it on Switch or whatever, put some earbuds in so you can hear it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's worth doing. So uh, it reminded me in some ways of Corpse Party, a little bit different than that. But like, you know, there's there's certain elements of it that reminded me of Corpse Party, but like in a good way. Yeah. You know, like because I know uh, depending on the entry of the Corpse Party series, it might not be a good thing. But Varies in this case, wildly. I mean, it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean it positively in this sense. <laughs> so. Nice. So any questions about Viviette? I mean, just my, my, my question was going to be, where, where does it stand in comparison to Corpse Party? Because just by the look of it and even by the description, that sounds like mm -hmm. the closest, uh, the closest neighbor. Um, and you already um, answered that. It's yeah, it's it's kind of like it's kind of it feels kind of like a mixture between like a Resident Evil style game and then like a Corpse Party because there's ghosts and stuff, but it's not like an inescapable dimension. It's like a mansion with some yeah. weird arbitrary puzzles where you find things to go into other it, like the puzzles aren't hard. You just have to remember this stuff, you yeah, know, yeah. Um, like so... a chill, friendly Corpse Party. <laughs> yeah, because like um, even though your sister is creepy when she's running around after you and it's scary, especially at first. Um, she's able to, you know, you can dodge her, you can fight her off, and um, you have, like, a stamina meter that will, um, you know, go down if you don't mash buttons to get away from her uh, right when she grabs you, but you have the ability to get away from her. So, um, although there are ways you can die, like, there's a part where you have to go walk off on a ledge, um, and it's really windy outside, so you have to like hold on to the building really tight. I don't know how you can vary how you hold on to a building, but <laughs> on the side of a brick wall, but whatever, that's a thing that you need to do. It's like, I guess you're pressing your body up against it. Um, you can definitely fall, and I definitely died several times to that the first time I was trying to go through the window, but there's safe places and things like that. So um, it's not like a super you know bad penalty if you do happen to die so um but anyway like I, this game i want to say is like three three maybe four hours depending upon how long you walk around mm -hmm. uh looking for stuff versus you know scouring at the first time that you're going through yeah um so it's shorter than corpse party it doesn't have the voice work that corpse party does it doesn't have the kind of crazy descriptions of deaths and stuff like that like like corpse party gets real into it but they don't show it on the screen so like yeah, i'm not yeah. really big into gore but corpse party doesn't you show it they write it out and so that's a little bit of a different thing for me where it's more acceptable to me in written format versus you know letting you just imagine what that's like versus yeah, yeah. sticking it in your face it's handled so, real well yeah yeah, yeah. And this one doesn't really have any of that kind of element to it. Um, but it's got, you know, horror in different ways because your sister's chasing you around this mansion and mm -hmm. not even save rooms are safe from her. The yeah. only place you are safe from her is outside the house. So she mm -hmm. will not follow you outside, but she will follow you everywhere else in the house. Um, and this stuff with a ghost is really creepy, like really bad, really creepy, kind of like in Corpse Party with what happened to Sachiko. So yeah. um, it's a similar, that's terrible. And it kind of has Phantom of the Opera sort of vibes to it. So yeah. um, it's interesting. I, I would recommend it um, for the story elements insofar as like, I still think I like Corpse Party more than this, but I'm glad that I played this. So mm -hmm. Viviette. Yeah. So the next thing that I was playing was Metopia. I continue to play Metopia because this game is a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. It, it's uh, um, it's going. It's it's it it's going. Keeps, it keep, you got eaten by a hamburger last night. I did. You uh, got eaten by a hamburger. It was pretty sad. I, I, I think it was that revenge for me. Apparently, eating penguin. I, I don't know. And it was a penguin treat. You were eating oh, um, a, okay. it was a, a fish you were eating. Okay. And you did not like that fish yeah. very much. 
Uh, yeah, <laughs> I did it, it for the stat bonuses, Cole. <laughs> I fed it to you even though you didn't like it because of the stat bonuses. Also, the animation is very cute. Yes. Because like when when the uh, characters do not like a food that you are giving them for a permanent stat bonus, they <laughs> will make a face and close their eyes and shake their head no. Like they don't even want to look at it when you try to give it to them. And then like when they eat it, it goes duh, 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 and then they act like they're about to die mm-hmm. and they like fall over. <laughs> it's yeah. pretty funny so <laughs> okay well at, at least i didn't eat a penguin that's that, that's what no, i thought was not an, not a penguin you did no. not eat a penguin you ate a penguin treat which was a fish okay so. i want to eat a penguin but the burger ate coal so i mean yeah. that that's in the um slack in the level regular level um <laughs> channel i also of course posted this on my twitter so <laughs> anyway uh dark lord dave created havoc in multiple kingdoms since the last time i've been on i think the last time i was on i was talking about like what just the demo or did i actually start playing the actual game i think I the, the last time you went in depth on this it was still just the demo Okay, well, okay, so he has wreaked havoc in multiple kingdoms. I've chased him down every single time, undoing all the damage that he wrought, and every single time, he kidnapped my party, and my own class got locked away, so I start from level one. Each time I, you know, every single time I had to go to a new kingdom, I had to start from level one and pick a different class to play. Okay. And so... You got kidnapped in the very beginning of the game after I finished the demo, Cole, and I was very sad. (laughs) But you're back now. So uh, on the final time, on on the final time of um, Dark Lord Dave trying to, you know, block my class, I'd grown immune to his attack because he tried it so many times and I'd gotten strong enough, you know, on my own and my base stats and stuff that, like, it just didn't work on me finally. (laughs) Uh, And... Huh? I was going to say, can we take a step back? Like, what is this game? Oh, Metopia is, I, I've talked about it the last time I was on, but it's been a minute. So Metopia is a cute little RPG by Nintendo where you have Miis, the little characters that mm-hmm. you can create for Nintendo. And um, you can create them from scratch. You can also inherit them from friends on your friends list and put them into the game. I basically made everybody from scratch. And the very first one I made was Cole. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Because the reason why I played Mitomo many years ago is because Cole was in Mitomo. And so oh, I went yeah. to Mitomo and then Cole stopped using it, but I continued to use it and became gotcha. friends with some listeners that way. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, Dennis is in there. And David is in there. I have not made a Ben, but there's still more characters coming. Like, there's lots and lots of characters in this game. Like, you can name all the NPCs. I made the Dark Lord into Dave. Um, You can turn the Dark Lord into whoever you want. I just Mm -hmm. happen to make it Dave. You can also change everybody's face and hair and gender and personality you can to make the and, and their name you can change them to somebody else at any time so if i want to i can make somebody else ben at this very moment i can change mm-hmm. my whole party <laughs> nice. so but anyway um it just started out as being like just a, a cute and fun rpg that really focuses on the charming little interactions between the characters who become friends and get into fights with each other and you know do all different kinds of stuff so um all of that plays out differently both in battle and outside of battle and when you're in the inns in between fights so Mm -hmm. uh, basically in the game the whole quest is that dark lord whoever in this case dave has stolen all the faces from all the people in Metopia, and you have to go get the faces back. Because he's putting them on monsters, and it's turning these monsters, who are otherwise normally friendly, into violent things that you have to fight, and then, you know, get the faces back for the people that you are rescuing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So anyway, at the part that I am currently in, in the game... I have gotten all of my old party members back, and I beat Dark Lord Dave, who was really just a dude that was possessed by some kind of eyeball creature. Of course. And then the eyeball creature tried to attack me, and the great sage John, who is Tethelis in the community, saved me, but then took the hit himself and became Darker Lord John. (laughs) And now we are trying to figure out where Darker Lord John is, and I'm in side quest land right now. (laughs) Um. 
So I can currently select any class for any character to try out, but they start at level one if they have never been that class before. They gain levels really, really quickly, so that's fine. And there's also a catalog at this point in the game where if I made anybody else into a warrior, then I can purchase from the catalog any of the armor or weapons that my highest level warrior has unlocked. So that way you can kind of uh, fast track their armor and weapons yeah, and things like that. And the, also the characters do not lose progress on any class. So, you know, I stopped at like level 13 or 14 as a warrior. And now that it's unlocked for me again, if I wanted to switch back to being a warrior, I could do that and start from level 13. Mm -hmm. And, um, so you can also just switch classes at any time at the end. And so I basically at this point tried out all the different classes. There's warrior, cleric, mage, pop star, uh, which is basically uh, a buff character like a, a bard. But they also, one of their main purposes is to end quarrels between characters. Okay. Um, and then you've got chef which that is kind of like a backup healer, also does some damage. There is the tank who does a lot of damage, but they cause quarrels because they literally will shoot other characters out of the cannon on their head. Yeah. Or, or they'll cause splash damage with shrapnel that hits everybody and they get mad because you're, they're getting hit by their friend, you know? Hmm. Um there is a flower who does, you know, has another balanced character that does some damage and can also heal people. There is uh, an imp who has some debuffs and some small attacks, but mostly they will kind of prod other characters to fight in their stead. So um, that's fun. There is the princess, which is Allison, by the way. Allison is my princess. Cool. And, um, at, uh, Gwen is also a princess. Uh, she is just a princess in another castle. She's not in my party. <laughs> anyway, so uh, princesses have a mixture of things where they can kind of get other characters to do stuff for them. They can also get monsters to do stuff. Like, they can make monsters dance. They can distract monsters uh, and stuff like that as well. So, but they also do have um, attacks that hit everybody. There's a thief who does attacks against everybody uh, or can set traps or do sneak attacks, that kind of thing. Um, basically, there's a lot going on. I'm a cat right now. Cats do a lot of damage. Oh, you buried the lead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm a cat and uh, I do insane amounts of damage and... I don't know. That's about all I can say about that. I also have <laughs> abilities where I can bring back people's uh, magic points by, like, cuddling them. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, so so that's the thing. It's very, very, very cute. And um, you can change personalities of everybody. The different personalities that you apply to characters will give them different buffs and different, like, debuffs, basically. So, uh, say, for example, uh, David is stubborn. And so stubborn David can sometimes like steal himself against attacks and not take as much damage. But also if somebody wants to heal him, sometimes he's being stubborn and he doesn't want to be healed and he won't accept their help. Okay. So there's different things like that that'll happen. So, and if you're laid back, then sometimes that means that you will dodge behind other party members who are stronger and then they will take the hit for you, which means that, you know, the people you dodge behind get mad. <laughs> <laughs> and so on it kind of like goes from there there's a lot going on with this game yeah um the exchanges between characters continue to be really really charming although some of them have repeated enough that they aren't funny the same way they as they were initially so i kind of wish that they had more interactions on deck for this um i've had party members enter into a quarrel and that causes a bunch of different characterization bits they don't really cause problems per se in combat because it kind of comes out in the wash um mm -hmm. when two characters quarrel it's because one of them 
you know, uh, pissed off the other one, either in a random part when you're traveling, when it's tired, you know, when they're tired and it's hot and they get mad and then they just get into a fight with each other or because they get pissed at each other in battle for any number of different reasons, such as being blown out of somebody's, um, you know, head cannon, which is very funny to no, say. That is that is pretty funny, actually. <laughs> uh-huh. And I, I think I actually I did post it to Twitter. I didn't I did not share a link in the backstage, but it is on my Twitter of Simone, who mm-hmm. was a tank briefly uh, firing Briar from the community out of his head. So <laughs> that was a thing. But anyway, um, when they quarrel, they won't help each other in battle. Sometimes they will interrupt each other in hog turns or trip each other up to make the other one look bad. Uh, they also get into physical altercations like David and Allison got into a big fight and they were injuring each other, but then they dragged the monsters into it and killed them. <laughs> okay. Oh. So, you know, like you just kind of watch it and it's just really entertaining to see what's going on. Um, it either takes a pop star to end the quarrel with one of the skills in combat or a lot of time spent in the room together in the inn or going out on outings together to kind of calm things down. And every once in a while, the characters will end the quarrel themselves. They will just apologize and say, I think we need to be friends again. And then they just make up. Right. You know? So, um, and maybe it's due to how many levels I gained in the beginning when playing the demo, but um, <laughs> the quarrels don't really cause any issues. And like, I have not really had any problems with that. I've died a few times in the game. Like, I've wiped, party wiped a few times, but mm-hmm. that's kind of rare. Um, it's not a really high difficulty setting. Like, it's meant to be fun and entertaining and kind of relaxing. It's not like a challenging, grindy RPG. You don't need to grind anything. Was I mean? So um, w- was there a level cap in the demo? Because you played a yes. lot of that. well, not not a level cap. They 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 capped it by where you were in the game. There was a point by which you could not pass to progress the story. So like at a, you you basically were stuck in the first section, and at a certain point, even if you kept playing it, you wouldn't be gaining levels anymore because the XP would be so low. Right. You know. So, um, so anyway, at this point, I'm about two thirds through the game, I think, uh, so that I don't burn completely out of, of playing this because this has been a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. Um, I've been picking it up and putting it down and playing something else and going back to it. Um, so the thing is, is that everybody seems to really enjoy the tweets I've shared of what the Mies are up to. And I know mm-hmm. every single time I put it on, Dave like scoots over and starts watching me play because <laughs> he wants to see what they're doing. Um, so, yeah, um, there is also another game on the 3DS called Tomodachi Life, which also uses Mies and which is more of a sim game. And I might eventually pick that one up, but I have so many games on backlog. It's not going to be anytime soon. Yeah. Yeah. So, has the combat? Any additional oh, oh, I'm just sorry, combat? I, yeah. Uh, has has the combat gotten more involved? Because I know you know it's auto it's auto combat based on class and equipment uh, for everybody, but your main character. Like, yes. have 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 there been like especially tough bosses or like uh, kind of intricate fights that require you know more than let's say like a dragon quest level of uh, engagement? Um. The the okay, there is a system of sprinkles that you can use from your menu, and sprinkles are extra hit points and magic points, life points. And at this point, I also have a hyper sprinkle that will buff your character and basically make them go berserk, where all they will do is attack and they do major like a lot of damage for them when they attack, but you can't use any special skills or control them at all. Mm-hmm. And um, that's like a limited time effect. But I use that on my main character all the time because she has such a high attack to begin with that, you know, especially on bosses, you know, she can just wipe them. You know, well, everybody else will be doing like maybe 50 damage. And then my character does 236. And it's like, well, okay, (laughs) I think I think I'll let that character go crazy on it. So it's John's um, world. We're all just living in it. (laughs) so so yeah like there are some parts where the monsters are stronger but again i grant i was grinding so much in the beginning of the game and i got so many foods 
at the beginning of the game when I was doing all that, you know, unintentional grinding of the demo waiting to play the main game, mm -hmm. that my main character is just super buffed with permanent stat boosts. Okay. <laughs> that like it's it's not super hard for me for that reason. Like I said, I have wiped a few times, but it's kind of um not as often. I will find myself on harder battles going in using the sprinkles um and returning people's hit points and magic points between other things. Because that does not take your character's move. That's a totally separate thing. So like yeah. once whatever character is currently going is done with what they're doing, you can use sprinkles and, you know, like save somebody's ass from from getting handed to them. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, and then also the characters themselves, if they have good rapport with each other, uh, if one of them is about to die, they'll be like, is this the end? And another character that they're friends with will step in front of them and protect them. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and they'll take the hit instead, and they usually, like, it's usually the highest defense character doing it. Yeah. So yeah. like they can they can withstand the hit where the weaker character could not. Mm -hmm. So um the Mies themselves kind of take care of battle for you. And like there's even an option where you can put yourself on autopilot and let the game do its thing and just watch it and just make some other decisions about other stuff if you don't want to actually fight the battles. Yeah. So um and they also have a two by speed, so you can speed up battle, you can speed up travel and all of that as well. That's good. So yeah, lots of concessions because they, they, you know, that they were trying to make this so that kids can play it, but basically everybody can have fun with this game. Like I'm enjoying the hell out of it, and yeah. you know, it's it's not hard. Mm -hmm. So that seems like good game design, just making it fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> seems like it'd be the aim. I like how it's going against the grain when we're talking about RPGs. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I just don't see any grinding anywhere, <laughs> any intentional grinding. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've I've been talking for a while, so I don't know that I want to go into Resident Evil Village right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I beat that game, so I cool. maybe I'll talk about that next time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And uh, so. I'm I'm st am I still coming on Monster Deer Monster to talk about that? Yes. Yeah. Yes, you are. Cool. That will be this Saturday, and it probably will also release on Saturday. Cool. So yeah, yeah. And we'll be talking about on Monster Deer Monster. It will be me and Cole and Dave, and we will be discussing the narrative aspects, uh, not the gameplay. So when I come on the show next um, on the level, I will be discussing just gameplay stuff and kind of overall of feelings about it without actually going into detail. Um, the Monster Deer Monster episode will be just flat out talking about the story. So if you don't want spoilers, don't listen to it yet. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And if you want to, if you want to hear, hear hear both, we're covering Resident Evil Eight um, as uh, we're we're covering it in October on WAF as well, just so people, because yeah. every enough people have asked that we're like, yes, we will be covering it. Don't worry, at all. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Um, I'm gonna go if 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 you're done, Jala. I've been talking a while. Somebody yeah. else needs to go. I don't want to be here forever. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I've got a new one uh, that uh, it, 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 there's not an awful lot to say about it because it's golf. But I picked up and have been enjoying Mario Golf. Uh, what is nice. it? Mar oh, Mar yeah. Mario Golf Super Rush, I think, is what it's called. Let me look on the calendar at the release date where I made the note uh, about when it came out. Uh, if yes, Mario Golf Super Rush. This is the new Mario Golf game on the Switch. It'd be weird if it came. It's it's Xbox Series X exclusive, yeah. guys. <laughs> uh, um, and it's good. Uh, I I'm having a, a good uh, a good time with it. Uh, this is I believe it's made by Camelot, the same people who have done kind of all of the or most of the Mario sports uh, RPGs. Uh, and, uh, kind of like a segue off of Metopia, you can, you know, you, you, uh, if you're playing the story mode, you play as a me version of yourself or whatever character you would like to bring in, you can bring in whatever me you want. Um, and you are dropped into, you know, a version of the world of Mario where golf is like the main thing. Uh, golf is to this world what Pokemon battling is to the world in Pokemon, <laughs> you know <laughs> the, it, it, golfing is the is the organizing principle but you start out as a rookie and you're working your way up uh i'm led to believe that there is a story honestly the 
dialogue is and not great, so I'm mostly ignoring it. <laughs> the you in this is literal you, not like you playing as Mario. Right, right. I think Mario Mario is a character in this. Or oh, you know, if you're doing the story mode, if you're playing like just a just a regular, you know, exhibition match or whatever, like oh, I just want to play nine holes, you can pick whatever character you want. And then you're picking mm-hmm. from basically basically the Mario uh like the Mario Kart roster, and they all have their own uh stats and specialties and stuff like that. But when you're playing uh, can you play as Link if this is from the Mario Kart roster? No. Um I I, I forgot that. That they added link to it I, you can <laughs> you can make a me that's link uh but it sure. wouldn't be it wouldn't be officially sanctioned we have honey we have link at home um yeah <laughs> yeah uh but if you're playing the story mode you're gaining experience and you're investing in your in your stats and stuff uh something that's been true about the kind of the character development in all of these going back you know uh pretty you know, pretty far is like specializing or raising one stat will always come with a like minor subtraction from another so like if you are boosting your control that will take a little bit off of your maximum distance or if you're boosting your spin it'll take a little bit off of your control uh so you have to kind of plan plan out um and specialize what you want to be uh it, only mario can be the mario and kind of just be you know average at uh, at everything uh the gimmick in this one uh is that uh so there's this kind of the speed golf mode uh which is strange uh i've not necessarily played a match that relies on this where it's a criteria but um uh everybody tees off at the same time and then you run to your ball across the you know ac- across the uh, course right uh doing like jumps and doing dashes you have like a little sta- stamina meter uh to get to your ball and then hit it uh, while everybody else is doing their big dash uh and you are going out of your way to like get coins and get little power ups and stuff like that uh the the way that this is going to factor in i've not played one of these matches but like matt you know matches will uh uh be like okay you want to finish with you know, the best under par or you want to, or you want to finish like with a combination of best under par, but also finishing quickly, uh, which means, you know, uh, yes, you will want to hit fewer times because you're running less, but that might change the strategy to it. I haven't done an, I haven't done enough of the running around to actually see where it goes. It feels a little bit gimmicky to me, but the nice part is that the actual like golf stuff is really good. It's the, it's the usual, you know, uh, uh, power meter kind of golf. It's not like a PGA tour or PGA 2k 21, which is the last kind of grown up golf game that I played where you're, uh, messing around with the analog stick. This is like classic mm, okay. Mar- Mario golf, uh, hot shots kind of thing, uh, with some nice, uh, kind of like affordances. So like the, the meter will visually show you because it's vertical, like ba- you know, based on your lie, uh, like, um, if the natural curve of your shot. So you can, like, so you can account for it. Like the actual meter, if you're, you know, hitting it while facing uphill, the, the, the meter will actually curve left. And then based on the, the, the lie, based on if you're on fairway or rough, like it will show you like what your odds are at various, um, power levels of like veering off to the left or right, like randomly. So it'll show you like, okay, huh. stop before, you know, stop before you reach this particular power point in order to, um, uh, not risk having it go wildly left, left or right, because you're hitting it out of the rough or hitting it out of this, hmm. out of the, uh, the, the, the sand, the sand, uh, sand trap, uh, stuff like that. So it gives you a lot of information. Um, and something that's really neat is you can just do ridiculous shot shaping, uh, so not only can you confer like spin on it, but based on the, uh, based on your, uh, I believe it's your control stat. No, it's, it's still spin. Like <laughs> the meter will be segmented and you can like put in the order and severity of like the curves that you want it to take or whether you want it to go high or low, because as the, like, you know, maps go on, these are going to, you know, they, they, they go from being like just regular plain grass golf courses to being like mario kart stuff <laughs> where you know, you're trying to hit through hit, hit through rings and avoid obstacles and stuff like that 
So being huh. able to being able to shape your shot like predictably and granularly ends up being pretty important. Um, yeah, but like it's a it's a golf game. It's it's fun. <laughs> so how in the rush mode like it seems like you can interact with other players like knock them around or or do some real Mario Kart stuff. Um, it feels like that would be infuriating. Have you? Like, does that disrupt it, or do you like that you can kind of knock other people around? That's ah, fine. Um, it, you know, it just it, like I said, it feels kind of like a like like a trifle, like a gimmick at this point. Uh, mm. Maybe because I am still early, they're going. You know, that they have yet to show me the, the the matches where it really justifies itself. But like, it feels very Mario Kart, like up to the point where, you know, if you are running behind somebody, you will draft off of them. <laughs> So oh. and and eventually get like a little speed boost uh without needing to use your dash or your super dash or whatever. Um yeah. I feel like the main thing that golf had going for it was it was like you versus yourself out there. And so <laughs> adding in that level of uh competition and directly interfering with other people is is interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean it uh it, it makes it a little bit more um you know, I think that it's there for people who who would not be up for just the pace of a regular boring golf game. It adds a little bit mm-hmm. of interest in between things. And this is something that had been the case like in a, a Hot Shots golf or everybody's golf or whatever, like where you could explore the course, uh, like the overall course, not just like the, you know, warp to wherever your ball is, but like walk around and find stuff and see like the lay of things. Uh, this is just mm-hmm. kind of like a timed you know, scramble version of it. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, but I'm, I'm curious, I'm, I'm curious to play more. It's a, uh, it's been a little while. Uh, we did like a, we did a WAF special about, about golf games, um, last, uh, last summer. And, uh, I'd been looking forward to this one, uh, since then. And, uh, my appetite was up, especially because it is summertime uh, and I would like to go golfing, but it is too hot. So yeah, I missed I that a, window. Yeah. I do. I do have a question about the multiplayer that you're talking about where you chase after the ball that you're in. Like, is, do you see that like as any response to like golfing with friends type games or is this like completely unique in its own thing? I've never played golfing with friends, so I wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't be able to say. Okay. All right. Nintendo has never necessarily been that direct with like responding to other stuff other developers do. So if, yeah, I, I would say if there's a if there's a similarity, it might be it might be either superficial on Nintendo's part, or they might have just arrived at it uh, independently. Or Super Nintendo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. Any other questions about Mario Golf Super Rush? No. Okay. No, there's um, a high probability I will be playing it at some point in the future. It's fun. Uh, the other thing, and I have literally nothing to say about this because the base game is coming up on 20, mm, almost, a, it's going to be like 27 years old now. Uh, Zombies and My Neighbors came out on Modern Systems here uh, today, actually. Yeah. Uh, it unlocked on the Switch last night, and I went in and messed around with it. Uh, you know, the original game out in like 1993. I talked about this on the, the end boss a while back when they kind of first announced this, we did an episode of watch out for fireballs about zombies at my neighbors. This is the Lucas arts top down, uh, co-op action game, uh, where you are going around various environments. You're playing as a, as a couple of punky teens, uh, there are universal movie monsters about, and you need to go and rescue your neighbors fighting off the monsters using things like uh, uh, water guns and uh, pop cans and tomatoes and throwing silverware at werewolves and stuff like that. Uh, It's a good game and I recommend people play it. Uh, But additionally, (laughs) um, yeah, the, the, the port is good. Uh, Like it actually has like in game saving as opposed to relying on the uh, relying on the password system. It runs well, at least on the switch. I dipped into ghoul ghoul patrol, which is, the kind of sequel that is that is bad it actually runs really badly i'm not sure if that's a problem with the switch a problem with the emulation or a problem with ghoul patrol uh but uh the action is just kind of like real choppy uh which i do not remember Mm -hmm. it being so uh you're not getting this you know 15 dollar game to play ghoul patrol and nobody is you're getting it to play zombies (laughs) because it's good and fun 
And it's a part of everybody's childhood, like it is a part of mine, right? Man, what a what a departure from the typical the sequel is always better than the first one line mm-hmm. of video games. This I mean, that was well before that was the case. Usually sequels were like uh, like back in the day, like in the 90s, you know, unless it was Nintendo, the sequels were often like farmed out to a B team so they could churn them out quickly enough to hit, you know, to strike while the iron is hot. So like, ah, fair, yeah, yeah so sequels were kind of always seem to be just 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 a, just a little bit iffy uh, back in the day, especially ribbon. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're just provoking me. Um, <laughs> oh, man. But uh, zombies at my neighbors. I'm really happy to have that on modern uh, modern consoles. It is a it is a good time. And I did not expect it to get any kind of uh, any kind of love. <laughs> yeah. Uh, any questions about that? No. Glad well, right. at least the first of those two games held up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's all I've got. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Dennis, how about you? Yeah. So um, I'm going to start with a board game I've been playing, and then I'll go back to video games to combo up with Ben. How okay. about that? Yeah. Um, but uh, a couple nights ago, some friends and I cracked into Madara, uh, which is a board game that is um, gigantic, uh, definitely rivals Gloomhaven in, in terms of scope, uh, and basically aims to capture the JRPG feel uh, just in a four-player co-op setting. Okay. Uh, have you guys seen this? I, I guess the specific subtitle of it is um, Accidental Malium Act 1. Um, Madara is the system, and then they've got the first act of the first story out with the with the game here. And that is like literally 500 pages of, of encounter books to wow. go through. Um, so this thing is a beast thick yeah um, i've not heard of this yeah i i um i think i had seen it on kickstarter way back in the day um because you know if, if it's out now that means it was kickstarted five years ago right, right. um <laughs> uh, and, and specifically them talking about the idea of you know the entire development team being really in love with jrpgs and wanting to capture that feel in a board game um, and they, they've done so uh, perhaps even a little too faithfully at points because there is definitely um, a, an overwhelming amount of just different items you can equip um, and, you know, mechanics for grinding gold and XP. Like, um, it's, it, it is a JRPG, and if you love JRPGs, you'll love this. <laughs> but it is not a JRPG with the rough edges sanded off. It is, it is a JRPG in every sense of the word. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, which is fine. I, the they they very quickly um, put out some errata or some additional rules to um, make the "Hey, I'm farming for random loot" element of of uh, the JRPGs uh, less impactful. Because um, you know, if, if you're getting together with friends, uh, you you can play maybe three encounters in a night. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't want to do the same encounter three times, hoping to randomly get the right piece of loot. God no. Um, no. No. The, so do, the, do the house, original do way house it worked, rule it so you get it. <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, and I think everyone did, and thus they just made that canon. the The original rule was like at the beginning of of every encounter, you create a loot deck. Um, and then there is one piece of of you know unique equipment that gets shuffled in, uh-huh. and then you whenever you kill an enemy, you draw a card from the loot deck. So you're fishing for one card in what is literally like a twenty plus card deck. Holy shit! Wow. Yeah. So you know they weren't kidding when they said they wanted to be faithful, but that is <laughs> that is not the way we wanted to be faithful. I, I mean, especially I mean th- th- three three uh, encounters in a, in a, in a session. So three, mm-hmm. three encounters per like hour and a half, two hours. That's too yeah. much. Yeah. And then, and you can get together once every two weeks, you know, so right, right. that, that stretches out. And I, I think, yeah, Woof. everyone decided to house rule it and they're like, yeah, that was, that was a bad idea. Yeah. Um, they've, they've been very active in posting errata and it's, it's easy to find, um, several updates, um, that have just come out as you play, um, but I will say that, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of burying the lead. The, the core game that you're playing is a ton of fun. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and you know, it works off of um, you know a, a grid-based combat system. Everybody has stamina points that you can spend on moving and attacking, or or sometimes uh, enacting special abilities. And you just kind of go through um, your turn order. The interesting thing here is that initiative is always com- initiative is always completely randomly decided. Hmm. Um, so everyone who's in the combat puts your puts their card in a deck. You shuffle up and lay all those out um, and play through it. And then you shuffle the deck again and lay that out and play through it. Um, which means in a, in a turn you could go first in one turn and last in another, um, and and literally be that far apart in initiative. Hmm. Um, which you know things things move fast enough that that's never too much of a drag, and I really like the way that it injects uncertainty into what you do at turn end, because it's like all right we're you know this I'm the last to go, um, this bad guy I've hit, but um, you know didn't quite take out. If I'm worried they're going to come up again before a player gets to go, uh, they might kill someone. Uh, or if you know if we can get a player to to go before them, we'll almost certainly, um, you know, defeat it and not have to worry about it. Like how how much do we want to all in on this? How risky do we want to be? Yeah, knowing that it's it's we we can't know when it's going to go again next turn. Um, like that that created a lot of interesting situations and discussions. Yeah, um, every character is very complex, and the game is designed to like there are classes. Um, or, or rather, I should say, there are disciplines of skills that you can pull from, uh, and you know you, you can get a level one from a discipline to start, and then to have a level two, you have to have at least one level one. To have a level three, you have to have at least one level two, mm-hmm. and so on and so forth. But there's no restrictions on what combinations of of uh, disciplines you can take, uh, and it's almost overwhelming the possibilities for building a class. Uh, each character has uh, you know some some special abilities unique to them. Uh, but they're pretty generalist in that you can you can take those special abilities um, in a lot of different ways versus those special abilities pigeonholing you into one class or another. <laughs> um, so the the feel of it um, as you're managing that, like in a low uh, in a lot of co op games, it feels like everyone plays everyone's character mm-hmm. uh, just because you know you're kind of hive minding it. Yeah, yeah. Whereas in in Madara, there's enough complexity with all these different disciplines, and then there's items and equipables and and all this stuff that um, you're kind of focused on yourself. <laughs> and right. uh, I found I found uh, this group, which like playing Pandemic, we played as a hive mind. Um, you know, not nearly as much playing each other's characters. It was you're focused on just figuring out what you're going to do. Yeah, which is good. That seems to be similar to Gloomhaven too, right? Like everyone's kind of focused on their own deck of the character actions. Yes, I in Gloomhaven it got to a point like there's a rule in Gloomhaven that you're not supposed to table talk about exactly what your initiative is going to be or exactly what cards you're playing. But I found halfway through that game we were all so familiar with each other's cards. Um, that we were just like, all right, just tell me when you're going so we can plot this out. Because if I'm before you, this is going to suck. If I'm after you, we can actually win this. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe I just don't know the Madara system well enough to, to do that yet, but it hasn't come up yet. Yeah. And also, um, like, yeah. it, a, th- a thing a thing about these is, like, who's going to stop you if the if the table decides, hey, it'll be more fun for us if we, if we you know, disobey the box. <laughs> Exactly. You know. Yes. <laughs> um, the other the other thing that was uh, uh, a step up from Gloomhaven was the way enemies are handled. So in in Gloomhaven, every enemy had a um, a deck of cards, deck of action cards that were shuffled, and you would randomly draw from that to find out what they do. Um, but you're just kind of you're playing that out. Um, and if one person is doing that, you can pretty much go to sleep between, you know, during the enemy turn and not miss anything. Uh, whereas in Madara, uh, each enemy on the board has an AI card, um, that is given to a player. And so like I am playing my character and then whenever this enemy comes up, I am running their AI. Um, and it's a lot more of like a, a true false. So like if you are adjacent to someone, do this. If you're not adjacent to someone, move X spaces and do that. Um, and so you you had a lot to do. And, you know, you, you're rolling for enemy attacks. You're rolling to defend against enemy attacks. So you you do a lot of dice rolling, even when it's not your turn, which I appreciate. Hmm. 
My uh, final thing to talk about in, in just my initial brush with this is the story. So the other the other JRPG thing that they uh, mimicked very closely was just the sheer size and weight of the story in this game. Um, and they partnered with Foreteller, which is like the the board gaming app where they kind of uh, do uh, produced audio for the story sections of games. Uh, Gloomhaven has it, and Madara has it. Okay. Um, and it, I mean, it's like a solid five minutes of audio before every single encounter. Oh wow! It is impressive. There was, I mean, there was probably a seven minute intro, uh, and then audio intros for every encounter. Uh, based on how the encounters go or based on how uh, the choices you make, you get different audio results, and that's all recorded. Huh. Um, or you get, you know, you get different uh, rewards, and then the story is different. So that that is all in the in the app. Uh, and so we listened to it, um, which is funny, you know, that so, you know, we're the first mission, you're, you're kind of doing a, a test at a school, mm-hmm. which is like a, a combat test. Uh, and it's all like, oh, the characters are high schoolers together and getting to know each other. Uh, it's a little it's a little squee like that. Um, and, uh, every time we put on the audio for that, um, the, the, uh, wife of the guy whose house we were at would come down and she'd give us a look like you guys are playing a game, right? Not just <laughs> listening to an audio book. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, it's like, you know, the, the characters are like flirting and discussing the, the drama and oh, stuff. Wow. And she's like, hey, this is not what I imagined you guys were spending your nights doing. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Trying um, to nerd shame you, dude. No, it was a blast. It was a lot of fun. Um, and, uh, and yeah, you know, it, it is an incredibly heavy game just in terms of content. The rules are very complex. Um, but if that's for you, if you liked Gloomhaven, uh, this, is, this is a great game to check out. You are, you're going to need uh, a Gloomhaven level of commitment for it, though. So, something that I like to do, and this is just a, a, a really superficial way to read these, but whenever you guys bring up one of these... Uh, one of these super intricate uh, board games, I go on Amazon and I look down on the product information uh, to see what the box weighs. <laughs> oh, sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gloomhaven is uh, 21.6 pounds. Uh, mm-hmm. Do you want to say uh, over or under on Madara? Is it going to be over 21.6 or under? I guess over. I, I will go over, and that's because it's very miniature heavy, but I don't know. Okay, yeah, it's, it's 22. So it's 0.4 Woo-hoo. over, but yes. They probably specifically designed it to. to it's yeah. like you know when they build a skyscraper and then put an antenna on top, right? To right. make it the tallest. <laughs> yeah, uh, you can do yeah. your workout with that. <laughs> <laughs> Throw it at intruders, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, no, it, it's great. So the the guy I'm playing with um, has a gaming table at his house, so we can just leave it set up, mm-hmm. um, and that probably shaves shaves twenty minutes of prep off of every session. Yeah, that helps. Prep and put away. Yeah. 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 Um, so expect to hear more about that in the future uh, and a really good first experience with it. Cool. Um, and I think we'll go now from, unless there are other questions, from the heaviest of games to the lightest of games. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't have a, I don't have a question. It's, it's, it sounds cool. Sounds neat. Uh, ben, SNKRX, man. Snake Doctor. <laughs> Hell of a drug. So I I bought it right after we recorded last uh, mm-hmm. just because it was so cheap. And, and um, I, I don't know that I've played anything else since. Yep. I might have not eaten. Oh, no. <laughs> and wow. I, I cannot believe just how, how, how little is in this game and how deep it is uh, despite that. Yeah. Just so much fun so to, to recap real quick and, and and chime in here wherever i'm getting stuff wrong but it is it is snake like you're you're you know running a snake of pips around a screen except each pip does different attacks and has different classes um and depending on how you combine those or have multiple of those um you get different kind of bonuses uh and then you also pick up relics as you go every couple of levels that confer other bonuses uh, and you, you're trying to find um, the right combination of those bonuses to, to get you into the end game. Um, you are offered three random pips uh, between each level. Um, and uh, that's, that's what you're choosing from, uh, from a pool of how, how many do you think there are like 30, 30 different uh, potential 
characters? Yeah, I'm not sure, and it's like tricky because they're, they're at different levels. So there's like a level one, you know, mm-hmm. every, just the type of whatever the class is. So like rogue, warrior, etc. But then like with level two, people dual class. With like level three and four, that you get some triple classes and stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of tricky. There's probably about like. I guess the buffs that you get per class kind of indicate how many different people there are for each one. I don't know. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So there's, I think 30 is probably a good estimate. Mm. Um, But something that took me a couple games to figure out um, was the importance of re-rolling. Yes. To to find the stuff that you want. Yeah. Um, So you can, you can re-roll the store at any point uh, and, and get a new set of three to choose from. Um, that is very inexpensive. It costs two gold and, you know, pretty quickly you're getting into places where you have hundreds of gold to spend. Um, so, you know, you can, you can really hunt for the stuff that you like, but there's enough, there's enough going on or there's, there's enough classes that it's not a guarantee you're going to find, uh, what you want and, and you don't want to drain your money too quickly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cause it's like the money that you spend to be rolling and buying stuff that takes away, you're not making interest off of that for the coming rounds. So it's like, mm-hmm. You only want to buy when you need to, or if there's like a sick combo that you can activate, but Mm. yeah. Yeah. So that, you know, that's all there is to it. There is no progression. Stuff doesn't get more or less common uh, as you play. (laughs) Every run starts from the same place. Oh, Oh, well, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. You're talking about in between runs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, in between runs. There's no Hades type of story. Like, and this is, this is the um, simplest pixel graphics you've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Um, but that I, is the I still most maintain, addictive thing. I maintain that it looks really good because of color choice. I mean, Baba is mm-hmm. you is simple, but it's good design, right? Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, simple. Simple is not bad. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I am completely addicted to this. I have not managed to clear the last level yet. Okay. Uh, I think the furthest there. I've gotten is 23 or 24 out of 25. Yep. Mm. Yep. So heartbreakingly close. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it, man, it, like... It does a good job of ramping up. It's like it really uh, stress tests how good your combo is, and it's like you really need like a game breaking combo to be able to beat the entire mm-hmm. game. Mm-hmm. So I had Invincible well, there's... Warriors, so that's what cracked it for me. But what's that again? I said I had Invincible Warriors, so that's what cracked it for me. Oh, Invincible! <laughs> yeah, there's there's like one upgrade you can get where it's like they get plus uh, like damage resistance and uh, like over time. And oh, so, yep, yep. yeah, so I had that and a couple other things. And so basically I would just try and run away from the enemies for as long as possible. It's like, all right, if I, if I have this, if I'm alive for a minute, then they just won't take damage anymore. And I can just <laughs> run into the bad guy and kill him if I want to, <laughs> which is normally That's a terrible great. idea. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've largely ignored warriors just because it takes so long for them to hit. Mm-hmm. Like their, their attack speed is so slow that it just makes you feel very vulnerable. Yeah, um, it, you never want to avoid like an entire class outright. It's just, you, yeah, you like, um, but if you pick one up, you just have to go whole hog and you just have to go completely four warriors if you pick that, you know? Yeah, th- and that's, uh, well, it's, it's six warriors, right? Um, that's yeah, one of the ones where you for the full three, upgrades. Three and three to get the bonuses. Yeah, um, the which, other... which is a cool way to do upgrades, by the way. The mm-hmm. dimensionality of it, yeah. Yeah, I thought because like the sorcerer is a is a two bu- or sorry, so the warriors are a, a three or two three length columns. Uh, sorcerers are like three two length columns, um, and and stuff like that. So that that impacts when the stuff kicks in. Um, yeah. So to clarify, yeah. you get for, so like warriors, you get upgrades when you have three warriors and six warriors in your party, and then with sorcerers, you get upgrades when you have two, four, or six sorcerers in mm-hmm. your party. Yeah. Um, but I think the most anxiety-inducing thing about the game is is deciding when to pull the trigger on, like, all-inning on a, a certain archetype. class. Yeah, archetype. Yeah. Um, I, tr- I try to stay as broad as possible before the first relic and only, you know, choose relics that will kind of start, start me in a direction but not lock me into a single class. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then by, like, the second relic, um, which is what, I don't know how many... Uh, levels in like six or seven three yeah so six yeah yeah. uh six six levels in that's when you start you're like okay this is the way i'm going uh and then you can probably survive until like 15 or so without doing your big all-in buy where you're just hunting for um the right classes classes. yeah yeah Yeah. is that 
is it similar to what you do or kind of you can reroll relics too but it's a little bit pricier um Mm -hmm. but yeah i I mean the the run that i won with was one where i had all the relics that i needed so it is definitely important that you get the right ones um yeah i agree it's kind of tough to know when to passively take relics that seem good versus when it's like all right time to just roll until i support this strategy that i'm trying to force um yeah yeah. and i think i I agree to to win you kind of need to get lucky in finding the synergistic relics and classes early on and then Mm. finding enough as you continue down that strategy to not get screwed Mm -hmm. Um, because i've definitely had games where it's like all right this is a mage game i'm deciding level two Uh, and it's like i don't see another mage for six levels so yeah sorry about it feels like the games like punishes you like that where it's like oh all sorcerer upgrades and i like haven't seen a single sorcerer in the (laughs) bank yet (laughs) yeah yeah it's the, the story our minds tell with a random number generator Availability. Uh, I will say that. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to make a joke about availability to heuristics, but. Yep. <laughs> um, the the one thing that I I kind of don't like is the upgrading of a specific unit. So you get bonuses by having a quantity of unit, and then by bu- buying the same or a quantity of class, but by buying the same unit over and over again, you upgrade that specific unit. Yeah. Um. And so buying it three times gets you to level two, but then from there you need to buy it an insane number of times. Six I think you more. need to buy it six more times to get it to level three. Yeah. Yep. Um, and especially for something that's like a higher tier unit that doesn't show up as often, um, that it feels almost impossible to do. Hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, that, that just feels so lopsided. I would love to see, um, something just a little less like jumping straight from three to six feels like too much. I I, th- I mean, I think there's upgrades with each one that you buy, but it's like when you get to level three, like new abilities will be unlocked in the characters. But I think like the stats of them will increase with each one that you buy in terms of like their attack and defense and stuff like that. Interesting. No, because I, I know for a fact that the the attack numbers don't go up. Okay. Um, the because it the only it doesn't tell you their defense directly it tells you it tells you their attack directly though and the numbers related to their attack does not change until you hit that that level uh so when you when you go from level one to level two your attack doubles and then when you go from level two to level three as far as i can tell you, you get whatever special text it is but i don't think it doubles again uh, mm-hmm. i might be wrong on on that last part um it, it, you're right. I think I think you might get like bonuses to your health every time you buy, but the, there's nowhere to see any kind of number associated with your health. Can you see the number when you attack the person? I thought it was just like a health bar or something like that, but I haven't. Yeah, it's I've just it. a, it's just a health bar. Yeah, you can't you can't see how much actual health it is. So what I was basing it off of is like noticing that after I had bought an additional one, like being able to kill enemies that I couldn't one shot like in the previous level, and this is like really early on, like level one or two or something like that. But I could be, I need, maybe I need to go back and check again. I could be wrong. Yeah. I mean, it's also, so this, the, the final like major thought I had about this is there are several times in, in the past week, probably like four out of the seven days where I've, I've gone into play and there's been an update queued hmm. for the game and, and things that I, I notice for certain changing about the classes, uh, from, from day to day. So this, this person is actively adding more classes and rebalancing the units that are in the game, uh, as, as we go. See, I see. Um, so like I Rangers changed their, uh, damage or added piercing or something like that. And there was like, there was several instances of like, Oh, okay. I, there's new classes in the game now. Or, <laughs> oh, the, you know, this, this does more or less damage now. Like, um, it's kind of interesting because, for a game that you kind of got to learn and figure out how to break to get the win, um, it feels weird to have the ground shift under your feet uh, so much. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, the, I think they've mostly been, you know, buffs or new classes, but at the same time, a broader, or sorry, not new classes, new units, um, a broader array of, of units uh, makes it harder to get the exact units you want. So, yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's interesting to watch it evolve. Yeah. It's interesting. The strategy, it's like, it doesn't, there's not always a clear strategy of like what's right to do. Um, 
especially like early levels, like just getting random units, like random warm bodies, just to like make sure you have enough to like kill things. Um, yeah, yeah. But even if they like, you know, long term, like you're not going to keep that class at all. You just need something that fires so that you can kill stuff and not die early on. <laughs> well, and, and because of the lopsided upgrades, you can get a, a level. Uh, right. This is where like a tier one class two level two. That makes no sense, right? Yeah. yeah <laughs> so yeah. A, a very <laughs> commonly appearing class, you can get them to level two easily because you're going to see them a lot. Uh, yeah. And even though they're they're a weak class, just having them at level two is generally enough to sustain you to the mid game. Mm. Um, and yeah, a lot of times I'll find myself rolling with with uh, two or three um, common quote unquote weak units. Um, until I until I make my big buy, just because you don't need to replace them, and I haven't found the exact thing that I I have in mind yet. Yeah. Are there any classes you just straight up avoid and never buy? Uh, no. I I even had a run where I had um three. Was it called psychers? The guys yeah, yeah. who have orbs. The, uh, the like the white the white class. Yeah, whatever. white class with orbs. The telekinetic mind people. Yeah, it's it, it, which is hilarious because they they're little do nothing guys. They're, there's no reason to have more than one on your team other than the fact that um, that adds orbs. But I I had and the orbs like circle around you and deal damage. So it's like a poor man's damage over time. Yeah. Um, because there, there's so many enemies that have like a field that does damage. They just have one little orb. Mm -hmm. um but i i think i got two of them uh early on just because that was what was offered and i was like you know what this is my thing now this is me uh and just went all in on it to see what would happen uh and got a relic oh that's what it was i got a relic that increased the number of orbs by by one two or three depending on how upgraded it was Mm -hmm. um and so i was just going in there flailing around juggling orbs uh and uh, did not get very far. <laughs> yeah, and then died immediately. Yeah, yeah. But I, uh, I've I've tried a couple times with warrior builds, mm-hmm. but have never again never quite found something that felt. Um, the one time I like all in, I'm gonna get to six warriors. Uh, went that direction with it. I I never was offered enough warriors. Yeah, uh, but I've had a couple builds that have have three warriors, and they do all right. Have you gotten merchant class yet? I have. Yeah, I, lo- I and I'm always looking to get le- get at least the first level of merchant class um for the extra gold. Yeah. Okay. User is uh I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. Um is bay because they ha- they have a permanent damage over time attack that they do. Curse. And, yeah. Yeah. And so for the for the boss levels you almost need that so that you can just focus on running away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for uh for for, for for time we're probably going to have to uh, move on. I, oh, so, yeah. Sorry, sorry to pull that. I didn't. I I would not have expected that the game would be this complicated and have that many like strategic in and outs to consider in a given run the, like it, that. That's the mind blowing thing. Yeah, it, it is like I think I've said before. I I love the idea of a progressive uh, skill tree builder, mm-hmm. and this is that. Like yeah. this is that, and literally nothing else. Yeah, like it's a snake game apart from that, <laughs> <laughs> and it's the best thing ever. Nice. Yeah. Oh, I, I have to say one thing as a parting shot, and I promise we will not comment further, but then, <laughs> uh, like how Milo gets really excited for Blood for Blood in, yeah. uh, in Slay the Spire, uh, early on they were watching me play and I took a witch, uh, yeah. and it happened to fit a damage over time build that I was doing. I was like, oh, a witch is great for this, and that cemented in his mind that the witch was the best ever, and so now um, he will, every time he sees it, get, get the witch, get the witch. Um, or if I don't have, I, I sold the witch at one point and bought a new, uh, uh, character on another one. He's like, where'd the witch go? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, God. It, it wasn't a good fit for this organization. <laughs> and it, it, it had to give her a gener- generous severance by which I mean, I sold her. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. oh gosh. Nice. Um, yeah. Uh, th- did you have anything besides Snake or Uh, no, I have not played anything. So I'm glad that I was able to stretch this out. No, I'm just nice. <laughs> yeah. no actually, I want to, I'm probably going to play this after we end the podcast because oh, now cool. I want to play it now. <laughs> I will do the same with you. <laughs> can, can you remind me where you found out about this, Ben? Uh, I got it as a gift from a friend. Oh. Uh, I sent him a birthday gift and he sent me this back. So, oh, nice. Karma. I got it from Karma. Cool. <laughs> I have not. Uh, I, I had not heard about it elsewhere, so I was just curious. 
because uh, mm-hmm. it's, Let's it's break always, the news on this one. It's, it's, it's always interesting to hear like where these bubble up for people because discoverability mm-hmm. is crazy on steam. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that, uh, that we're, we're going to go on to the next, uh, go on to the next segment. Multiplayer. Now it is time for the multiplayer where we ask you a question and then you answer it. Jala, uh, what is the question that you ask the nice people? I asked, what's a franchise that you like the overall idea of more than you like playing and why? And you put uh, you put Dark Souls in the post image there. <laughs> I well, that's okay. because I figured Harsh. everybody has, everybody has an answer of Dark Souls for every <laughs> single question. Right. It was like I was trying to think about it, and I'm like, what's something? You know, like I think just because you know, uh, spoiler for one of various answers I can mm-hmm. have to this because I can answer this a hundred yeah. ways. Um, Dark Souls, I like playing it. Mm-hmm. But it just requires a lot of time consistently to play it, to get good enough at it, to do certain parts. And right, it's like, right. once you develop that skill level or whatever, then that can stick with you. But like, I don't have the time consistently to play the one game right. until I get there. So like, yeah. I, I do intend someday to get back to it, especially <laughs> now that Dave is here and can, you know, sun bro it up or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um but we have not had a jolly cooperation at this ah, time. Jolly cooperation. It's been stressful enough in my real life to <laughs> not want to get stressed out trying to beat yeah. things in the game and get back to where I was on Steam, you know? Like, yeah. I still have, I have to get back to where I was first. So, <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll start us here with Ollie, yeah. who says Dragon Age. I like the idea of it, um, and the wafts make it sound great, uh, but I just can't uh, see myself ever playing it for more than the hour that I did. Uh, it just felt like too much work for what I want in a video game. Yeah, no, I can, I can see that. <laughs> okay no okay so i <laughs> i thought that i was like uh editing to save ollie some embarrassment because you know like 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 i said jala put uh put dark souls in there and ollie's actual response read your image is a perfect example dragon age and so i was like uh-huh. oh yeah. I'll, I'll save him the embarrassment and then ollie responds saying yes i know that's not what the picture is i was swerving you uh <laughs> got him <laughs> okay good, good, got me i was, try- <laughs> I was trying to help you ollie oh gosh <laughs> Yeah, uh, Dragon Age is a lot, um, especially because the first one is paced like a nightmare, and the third one is MMO quests, and it's not a really interesting long. main story, and it's very long. And, and you're scanning, you're walking around scanning forever. <laughs> yes, yeah, uh, yeah, it, it would be tough. I would recommend, you know, at this point, I would I would tell people to go into different CRPGs so I can I can see that. Or you can do uh, you you can take the uh, the accepted route, which is just to read wiki stuff, or uh, go on to TV tropes and poke around and get the gist of what's going on in the game. That or is just play The Witcher. Yes, but yeah, The Witcher would be the one that would be the main one that I would recommend going to. Uh, thank you, Ben. Um, yeah, well, uh, Ben, what does Rob say? Rob says, "I love the over-the-top butt rock as video game style tone of Devil May Cry and Bayonetta, but I have no interest in playing uh, style-driven character action games. My brain just doesn't like the pace and combo systems. I usually stick to watching playthroughs." Yeah, uh, yeah I could I could watch combo videos of Devil May Cry all day, <laughs> but you can also play and do those combos in Devil May Cry. Oh, the no, I cannot I I can do had. those combos, <laughs> not the way they do them. <laughs> right. The most fun I have ever had with Devil May Cry, especially given that I cannot even look at the remake without getting mad, nah. uh, is uh, just watching Dennis play. Like, I, I don't yeah. want to play it, but I, I have no problem watching <laughs> Dennis do it. Yeah. It's weird. It, it is it is a strange experience because they, the like the experience of playing them, like the things that you are doing are so amplified visually. That, that 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 is a dissonance that I feel, and I I think I, I rest mm. somewhere between uh, Dennis and Jala uh, in my enjoyment of those character action kind of games. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, Dennis, what does Greg say? Dark Souls, enough said. Yep, it's a device, <laughs> it's a device of game not for everybody. <laughs> Somebody was going to say it. Yeah. They're just proving the point that Dark Souls is just an answer for any multiplayer question. Oh, they right. were forced to say this type of thing. <laughs> Somebody just write an AI 
just write a bot that just answers Dark Souls automatically. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jala, what does Tom say? Tom says, so many of the hero multiplayer games give me stories in the lore that are way more interesting to play than the game they are from. If you told me there was a monkey from the moon who wanted to save the day, I would play that game immediately. Unfortunately, he's in Overwatch. If you told me there was an evil scarecrow that stalks the countryside, I'd be down for that. Unfortunately, he's in League of Legends. Yeah, yeah. It's weird. I feel bad for those narrative designers because, you know, those are big companies. Those are high profile titles and people really like those. But it's, you know, like the stories that you put in, but also it has not surfaced at all in the in the actual experience. Yeah, it's just like the, the intro mm-hmm. video and any uh, additional stuff that you might, you know, that that might be done uh, comics wise and stuff. Well, it's like leaving a lot to the, the player's imagination um, can be a powerful thing. Yeah. Like, this is a really cool idea, and we're not going to fill in all the gaps for you. You can do that for yourself. Yeah. Um, Alex says, the Final Fantasy thirteen franchise. You mean Fabula Nova Crystallis? <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, I, I I can see that. Um, it, it, it's interesting to read about, and the, the, the later games in that, from what I have played and tried, have gotten, they get weird and wild, like, mechanically, but also Teflon. No. Mm-hmm. Uh, ben, what does Ruki say? Ruki says, Shin Megami Tensei, an RPG where you summon demons to fight other demons in a post-apocalyptic techno-mystical Japan? Sign me up! Every time a new one gets a price drop, I try it out, thinking this could be the one, but I always end up bouncing off after an hour or two. Yeah, it's still a JRPG. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, you might not like Madara. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Dennis, what does Eli say? Eli says, looks across the vast ocean of every MMO, an open world to explore. Cool. The potential to take a fellow adventurer you met on into a dungeon to reap the rewards together. Rad as hell. Auction houses, waiting in queues, raids. No, thank you. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad that I got that out of my system. Like when I was in, you know, <laughs> you know met, like middle school and playing EverQuest. Got all my rating mm-hmm. in, and I was like, "Yeah, this is not not necessarily for me." That 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 was a fun time, but also, yeah. I I am cons- I am basing my opinion of an entire genre off of twenty years ago. So, <laughs> yeah, like I I did like one raid once, <laughs> and you and played a like, lot of Guild Wars, right. Guild Wars, and Guild I Wars. I played too, a right? lot of Guild Wars and Guild Wars Two. Guild Wars the original way before I was actually on the show, uh-huh. <laughs> but um, yeah, I played a lot of those games. Yeah, I have not been back in them for several years at this point, though. Yeah, so, been a minute. Uh, let's see here, Jella. What does Sean say? Sean says the Yakuza franchise absolutely love Japan and the thought of taking in its culture, exploring its cities and having a gritty Yakuza story is perfect to me. But just the sheer number of games and all the wacky side quests put me way off diving into the series. Gary sums it up. And even though it is not accurate, but like whenever he talks about this, says like it feels like seven of those games come out a year. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> well isn't, yeah. isn't one of the newest entries in the franchise kind of like a a, a branch off or, or meant to be kind of an entry point for those who feel intimidated yeah so. yeah i forget which one that is because there's seven of them every year so I, like <laughs> a dragon yeah yeah the, like a dragon uh stars a new character like it doesn't continue the saga of uh kiryu who's the main character from zero uh through six yeah, so me, I, th- I think like a dragon is like consciously a uh, a reset point, uh, mm-hmm. in, in addition to the um, in addition to the uh, uh, mechanical reset as well, going to turn based. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I can I can see it's how a lot, it's uh, even then. yeah, it's just a high barrier. Uh, they're fun though. Uh, David writes honestly, Final Fantasy. I played at least eight of them, and I <laughs> sorry, that's <laughs> that's so many. <laughs> Uh, sorry uh honestly final fantasy i've played at least eight of them and i'd say only really i only really like three of the ones that i've played that's a good batting average in baseball but not so much for a game series uh only a few get the combo of story characters and battle system right for my taste 
I really hope you bailed out of the other five before getting too far invested. <laughs> yeah. World may never know. <laughs> Um, yeah, I can, uh, I can, I, I can see that because they're, each of them is different or there's like two or three different types. So like the three of the eight that you played were probably more similar to each other than they were to the other kinds that were there, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also kind of hard to go back to a final fantasy these days. Uh, yeah, I, w- I don't think I'm ever going to finish 12 at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got pretty far. Yeah. Yeah pretty freaking far but i don't think i'm ever going to finish it yeah Mm -hmm. um i did you are free you do not have to finish it just just because i happen to like the game (laughs) (laughs) there is no service that the level offers is absolving people of guilt of games that are halfway completed (laughs) father forgive me i hate this game it it is not (laughs) or i'm just disinterested in this game you know and it's presumptuous Mm -hmm. to say like oh i have that power to make you feel bad or good but i know you picked it up on on my recommendation at least in part it's like no the, well, if there I, was any I, I got what I, I what i want out of it yeah. i mean like you know like it's got some good concessions for gameplay but it's still got you know grindy bits and it's whatever i don't even remember at this point what in the hell was going on in the story so it's yeah. like i am not about to replay to figure out what just happened i, I don't i don't need to deal yeah. with that so uh let's see here so that was me ben what does julia say julia says 0451 games in general but specifically deus ex i am half cyborg why am i stealthing instead of air juggling these fools (laughs) (laughs) yeah point i i I think air juggling fools becomes easier in the later entries like after the Mm -hmm. reboot but the original deus ex no jc jc gotta be an event Mm -hmm. Uh, it's also like (laughs) Stealthing is all. It always seems to be the way to see more story. Yeah, you know, if you, I don't want to interrupt this interesting flavor text from the guards, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, which just makes is anathema to the way I want to play the game. Yeah, uh, <laughs> they could they could handle it like Assassin's Creed and have you have a conversation when you kill the person for some reason. Requiescat in pace, Dennis. What does Chris say? Chris says, I think Metroidvanias would kind of be a genre like that for me, mostly because I've not found most of them as satisfying as some of the Castlevania versions I've played in the past. Uh, And then there's something like La Mulana, uh, which is kind of that turned up to 11, which I absolutely love what I've played and love the idea, but I'm just not that good at it. Uh, But it's something that I'll slowly pick away at. Yeah. Yeah, La Mulana is brutal. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, just from a puzzle perspective. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a completely different kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, and then Jala, what does Case say? Wrapping us up. Case says, I love the idea of a factory game like Satisfactory or Factorio. I've watched dozens of hours of Let's Plays, but when it comes to doing it myself, I get bored after the first few hours, install a ton of mods, and never actually finish the thing. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going it, to increase the weight of this until it crushes itself. <laughs> it can be hard sometimes to like not get bored or frustrated with the pacing of some of those games. Mm-hmm. I think it, it has to be really delicately balanced because, like, uh, the one guy or uh, Dyson Sphere Project, they did a good job of like completely changing the game, like every you know five to eight hours. But Factorio does not quite do that. Yeah, yeah, well, I think. Part of the problem for me is is I have that feeling um, of not wanting to kind of slog through the early bits applied across games. Mm. Like as I get to a late level or I have all the tech and I've advanced all the things in, in one game, starting another where it's like, oh, I need one wood plus one leaf to make a sale. What do you make with one wood and one leaf? I don't know. Um, but like, you know, to, to go back to that, even though I know I'm starting a different system, just feels bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I'll do mine real quick. Uh, Zachtronics games for me. 
Uh, yeah, just uh, like I understand that they're very good games and I want to, you know, like dig into them. I know there are multiple different kinds of them as well, like Infinifactory and Space Chem and Opus Magnum are different than Shenzhen, Shenzhen IO or TIS 100. Like all of them are a kind of crunchy puzzle game that I really admire, but I also just, my brain doesn't necessarily work on their level. Um, you know, they're all recreational programming games. Yes. more or less. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so like, I can be, you know, I, I can be pretty satisfied in the early going of them, but when it gets to like the actual expressive play of like not just creating a solution but optimizing it, it ends up being you know too too much for me, and I've just kind of come come to admit that I'm not up to the task, and that is fine. Yeah, that's what it gets from being a recreational computer scientist. You need start to need to be a, study and be an actual computer scientist to do some of the puzzles. Uh, yes. Yeah. Not. That's where it's like questionable, like who their audience is, I guess. Yeah. But, Wait, am I debugging? I'm debugging. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, but, but like, then, then you look at, you know, uh, human resource machine or uh, 7 billion humans. That is about, you know, that's more my speed, right? But that is also aimed at a more general kind of audience. Like Zachtronics, they make their games, they make special versions of their uh, versions of their games available for like academic institutions. So like they, mm-hmm. they very much know what what kind of stuff they're getting into and it's just not not for me you know that's fine uh ben how about you uh i'm gonna say uh paradox uh games so like crusader kings and like that space one mm-hmm. uh I really wanna have, have you tried that space too uh <laughs> that space one that space two <laughs> yeah no that's no yeah but no they sorry were, they showed, joke. Got it. <laughs> they showed excellent foresight in calling it that space one, knowing mm-hmm. that they would make a sequel. Yeah. <laughs> you got to appreciate the confidence at least. Um, <laughs> I just wish I knew how to play the game. So that's, uh, that's like the big barrier to entry, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. that, yeah. So similar to mine. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Dennis, how about you? Yeah, I think for me, it's, I don't know if it's so much a franchise, but the the Valorants and CSGOs, any of the hyper-mechanically precise, hyper-team-focused games, uh, specifically shooters out there. You know, I I love the fantasy of being the SWAT team going in and clearing the building and, you know, Mm -hmm. everyone's firing on all cylinders. um, And I just do not have the talents or the time or... Uh, the friends with the talent or the time mm-hmm. <laughs> to to really get into those the way that I would want to uh, versus just being, you know, the feed that is making everyone else feel strong. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, every every match needs somebody to get killed. <laughs> That's right. Yep. That I am tired of being that person. So I'll play another game. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, wait. I, I hated it that much that I left the call. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, what did I do wrong, bud? I, I will now mute so I can cough. Okay. Uh, uh, Angela, uh, as the original asker, uh, how about you? So I was talking to Dave about it, Cole, but okay. upon reflection, I realized that I don't watch horror movies. I don't read horror books. And I don't really play, I didn't really play horror games when i was growing up really i began playing more of them after hex crank became a regular thing for me Mm -hmm. so basically cole you did this to me like made me somebody who plays horror games all the time because like i do all the time like i just talked about one i have another one to talk about the next time i'm on the show Mm -hmm. (laughs) so you know that's a thing um but yeah a large number of survival horror games especially all the really old ones I don't want to play them. I don't yeah. have any problem watching somebody else play them. Yeah. <laughs> Such as Cole, you do a service. But <laughs> I I guess being able to hang out with everyone and watch you deal with the frustration has really spoiled me. So mm-hmm. I just I just watch a lot of them and I'm like, oh, I can take this in without now I don't have to deal with it. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> like there are exceptions, of course. Like I like playing Resident Evil games, for example, but like there's also a vast number of them that are just more interesting to absorb as an idea for me than they are to actually 
you know, undertake them personally. But I, I could say this about quite a number of different types of games. There's a mm-hmm. lot of types of games I don't play because I don't have space in my life to figure it out or I just don't really like the mechanics or whatever. So I was like, you know, I have a lot of answers for this, so I'm just <laughs> going to drop it on everybody and see what everybody else says. Yeah. So. <laughs> no, and anybody who likes horror games would would listen to you say that and go, yeah, okay. Just they would nod because yeah, that makes that makes sense. Well, and horror is such a broad genre with so many different subtypes mm-hmm. that it's like some types are more my thing than others. Like I like psychological horror. I am not really into jump scares because they don't work on me, mm-hmm. and I'm not into gore. Uh, although written gore is apparently okay, I just don't want it in my face. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. You know, too much anyway, like, um, you know, that kind of thing. So, like, there's there's a bunch of different types of, of horror subgenres that, you know, are interesting in their own rights, but not necessarily my brand yeah. of, you know, type of thing. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. And especially, like, the nice thing about older horror games is that there are newer ones <laughs> that have <Yeah>. learned from <laughs> them, you know? <laughs> or they get remade or, you know, XYZ yeah. down the line. So, yeah. Uh, good question, Jala. Thank you for putting it up. Um, thank Ooh. you, everybody, who uh, responded. If you would like to participate in these, go to facebook.com slash the level podcast and watch for the prompts to go up on Monday afternoons. The end, boss. Now it is time for the end, boss, where we talk about things that are going on in the world of video games around us. Uh, Jala, what's Chipotle doing? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> they, <laughs> they they released a racing video game for 48 hours last week called the Chipotle Race to Reward Exchange. You could choose an electric car, electric bike, or electric skateboard to play, all of which were actual real world prizes you could be awarded if you were one of the top winners of their race, apparently across everybody in the U.S., uh, they also gave a bunch of loyalty points to people who were in the first batch of people to play, and this was an effort to generate interest in their loyalty program by promoting the idea that members can receive their rewards quickly. Mm, uh, okay. You had to register for their rewards program in order to play it, of kind course. Of a, and I go to Chipotle, uh, whatever, but, like, come on. <laughs> this is... Ridiculous. Anyway, half of Chipotle's customer base are Gen Z and millennials who are more likely to be gamers. That is why they are trying to appeal to this market with right. a weird game. I don't know why they did this. It does not. I, I popped <laughs> yeah. onto the website and it's not exciting looking. The, the, I was it's, like, it's the kind of retro look that is, it feels like it's not uh, imitating retro games. It's just actively bad. Yeah, it's just like that's not quite a a particular era of old video games. That's just something else entirely. It's a flash game. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. It's it's pretty gross. And I was like, oh, that's weird. Okay. My so, guess about what this is is Chipotle saw that every year KFC did their little game stunt, and people uh-huh. respond. You know, we talked about this stuff here. You you streamed. Yeah. It, yeah, for, you know, I for sure did stream, stream yeah. the KFC romance <laughs> game. And they also have like romance novels and a whole weird like oeuvre of like just yeah. weird stuff around the kernel that they've been releasing for years and years. Yeah, and it's just real weird. Comics, everything. <laughs> yeah, it's like it, it feels almost like you know they earned that, and then uh, <laughs> these guys come waltzing in. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, and th- can... this is like a really failed effort to try to yes. do that. I mean, they yeah. did not get Mario Lopez to do their lifetime movie or whatever. No. It was. No. <laughs> so. Weird and bad. Yes. <laughs> um. Uh. Speaking of weird and bad, but uh, airing toward good. I was very disappointed here recently when it was announced, um, Facebook had announced that they're going to start uh, uh, messing around with targeted dynamic advertisements in VR games on the Oculus platform. Uh, Way to to kill it before it's even alive. (laughs) Yes. Yeah, no, make it gross. Hey, I paid $400 for this fucking headset. Maybe don't like put ads into it, please. 
Thanks. If you can, Mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, but, uh, the, the thing is at least one developer, uh, is saying, Hey, uh, our fans are really grossed out by that. Uh, so we're not going to be participating in it. So it's uh, resolution games is the developer. Um, and they're not, they're not going to be testing games in or testing ads inside of their game, uh, blast on blast on something like that. Um, mm-hmm. which makes me want to try blast on. Cause this is a good, it's, I, I want to reward them. <laughs> I want to reward them for listening to their, uh, for listening to people. Uh, this is bad. Uh, you know, I, t- it's gross enough that you have to have an, uh, a Facebook account to sign into Oculus, you know, and it, it it's yeah. all like me- messed. It's all mixed in with, uh, with, with their social platform and stuff like that. But just, it, yeah, plugging it into dy- dynamic ads, it, it, that just makes it feel cheap to me. And a cool thing about VR is that it's, you know, it's supposed to feel premium and good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I hope more developers pay attention to this. The, the timing of this is kind of scary. I'm, I'm reading a, a book called One Up, which is just kind of a history of the gaming industry mm-hmm. um, that's very recent, like up through 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I just finished reading the chapter um, about Facebook and Zynga and kind of realizing like, oh, games are a really effective way to keep eyeballs on our site so we can show them more ads. Uh, yeah. Uh, just everything that that led to. So they're they're... <sighs> Running the play again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So hopefully, hopefully plans change. That's what I would mm-hmm. like to see. Um, uh, let's see here. Dennis. <laughs> uh, yeah, continuing the, the weird and bad streak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's going um, on with Magic Legends? Because I feel like we just heard about this, like in the, in the news section with Ben. Here, yeah. Like a couple of weeks um, ago. It is going away super fast. So. Uh, Magic Legends is the very poorly named Diablo-like from Wizards of the Coast uh, in the Magic the Gathering universe. Um, I I played this beta. I talked about this on the show, and I I didn't necessarily have um, horrible opinions of the the concept of the game, but it was a beta-ass beta and uh, chugged along at like three frames per second, and everything was super unpolished, and um, people noticed uh, the game is going to close down. Uh, in fact, it's going to shut down uh, on October 31st, so Oof. the end of the month of October, um, which means it will have existed for all of, uh, I think, seven months hmm. before uh, getting getting smacked down. Uh, you know, on the one side, I don't want this to be just a point and laugh story because people being willing to try something that doesn't work and then shut it down and take take what they learned and, and do better next time yeah. is is essential in, in getting actually good, innovative new games. So, you know, on, on one hand, kudos to them for um, pulling the plug on something that clearly wasn't working, and, mm-hmm. and hopefully they at least learn stuff that they can take into the next game. Yeah. Um, on the point and laugh side, uh, <laughs> this, this felt very like cash grab at Diablo's gold pile. Right, right. Uh, uh, mentality, and uh, and it did not work. Um, so you know, there there are still franchises, uh, you know, IPs that are not strong enough to just get slapped on any old game mm-hmm. uh, and carry it. Um, so there's there is some discernment out there. Yeah. Trying to look and see what else this uh, what else this company had done. Oh, they they, they were do they were on uh, City of Heroes and Champions Online. Yeah. Uh, they did so I mean, an, an awesome winter. dev, but just uh, yeah, yeah. I don't, well, don't know what they were going for in this space. Yeah. Hopefully, this doesn't torpedo them. But I mean, it's better than throwing good money after bad. Mm-hmm. Um, it just kind of seems like Magic's, uh, you know, M- Magic's audience knows what they want, and what they want is the card game. I, mm-hmm. I've never met a Magic player who was overly invested in the lore or wanted to see like stories i know they're like novels set in the world (laughs) they do okay yeah yeah this begs the question is uh oh go ahead no no sorry what were you gonna say this begs the question of if riot's card game is still going was that legends (laughs) of rude terra i i forget i know valve shut down their hearthstone alike artifacts um, yeah, Legends of oh, yeah, Artifact bombed hard. Legends of Runeterra um, is still going on. I, or at yeah. least I still see people on my Steam playing it. 
Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, and then conversely, uh, Blizzard tried to do Heroes of the Storm. Yeah, just these the, these blatant fast follows. Like, I don't know. It kind of seems like you're going after an audience that's already captured. Yeah. Just, I mean, just because a giant company is doing the blatant fast follow, it doesn't mean it's going to be good. Right. Well, all right. Yeah. Hold on. With Artifact, they got Richard Garfield to design the game, and he's the guy who designed Magic. So right, at least they right. tr- yeah. tried to credibly do it <laughs> in that case. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I resist the notion that someone that uh, captured lightning in a bottle once. I mean, you know, Magic is such a massive game. Obviously, yeah, he was yeah. able to capture lightning. More than once, but that you know that necessarily means he's going to make a, a great, complete other game in the same lane. Mm-hmm. Like that's that shouldn't be required of people who do something really well. I will yeah. say also at the same time he was designing the Dominaria set for Magic, like Magic Magic or whatever, and that Didn't was great. he also um, designed Keyforge or something Soulforge. Yeah, huh? I don't know that off the top of my head. I was looking at um, I, I was I'm looking at his Wikipedia. Uh, he also did uh, d- he did a card game called Dilbert Corporate Shuffle uh, oh in uh, 1997. Oh so. no! I, did- I know when he pitched idea for Magic, he also pitched idea for I think Robot Rally, the board game, and yeah. made that. I didn't know. Oh, that he this is funny. There, so there, he's yeah. made Soul Forge, and there's a game called Keyforge. That oh, he made. I apologize for correcting you. I did not intend to do that. This guy is forging all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Out of his forging mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully this doesn't uh, this doesn't uh, scuttle um, uh, cryptic. Hopefully they can bounce. Honestly, back from, you know, from yeah. from that perspective, I hadn't thought about that. From that perspective, the th- the idea that they are um, you know pulling this and redirecting resources early on mm-hmm. is probably a good sign in that direction versus them like knuckling down for three years trying to force it to work. Yes. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Round us out, Ben, with our, uh, bad and weird story quartet. Uh, how did, <laughs> how did Square fuck up? <laughs> yeah. So I, I didn't, I don't know anything about this game, but I just saw the article, thought it was interesting and then learned something. So I thought I'd pass it on. Yeah. So for, for all of our listeners who are playing Marvel's Avengers, uh, this is already a resolved story, I guess, because this happened midweek between our recording now and last week. Um, but there was a bug in that game that publicly displayed the IP address of the player. Yo, which, oh no. Which sounds like a bad thing. I didn't 100% understand why it's a bad thing, but then it's like, oh, the IP address will have like linked like the location of where you're at. And then mm-hmm. so it can lead to things like doxing or like stalking or bad things like that. Yeah. Uh, so, bit of a blunder. They did a hot bug fix and fixed it, I think, six days ago. Mm-hmm. So, it should be fine now. Um, that's it. That's just, uh, but I guess the other part of this is I didn't realize that this was, uh, developed by Crystal Dynamics, the people who made Tomb Raider. Mm -hmm. Um, so Hmm. weird, but okay. (laughs) My, my understanding is that like the, the single player in that where you play as, um, Miss Marvel is actually really good. Uh, yeah, I, I heard it compared, uh, like favorably to, you know, spider-man right the 2018 spider-man game in terms of being like a really good solid campaign the problem is they try to turn it into like this uh um you know game as a service uh ongoing kind of expansion kind of thing um that yeah. was not necessarily that didn't justify being that so mm-hmm. yeah well at, at the very least hopefully <laughs> the, you know uh, the, the the solace would be that uh, this is not like um you know a permanent ongoing leak where you know you have to change all of your passwords and stuff. If this was just yeah. a temporary IP address, you know, reveal. I saw this and I was like, okay, I, am I going to have to fucking? Because I booted this up, <laughs> I got a hold of a yeah, copy. Oh no. I, I was like, oh god, am I going to have to like go reset passwords? No, no. So so I don't. They they even tweeted like, please refrain from playing this online until we like fix like. <laughs> Oh, wow. It's like, ooh. <laughs> Please Just refrain from playing. To try to fix it? Wow. <laughs> Please That's refrain it. from playing our online service game online. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> <sighs> wow. Stop requiring online connections to play offline segments. Yes. It's, it's dumb that. and bad. <laughs> um Cool. Well, uh, that sounds like a show to me. How do you all feel about, feel about buttoning it up? Buttons. Greta. Hi, Greta. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Greta has spoken now, too. Gre- Greta has spoken. Thank you so much for listening to level number 377. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time. 
Uh, you know the things that you can do to help us out. You can go to uh, patreon.com slash duckvtv. You can go to facebook.com slash the level podcast. Uh, you can tell your friends or leave a rating or review uh, on iTunes. Um, I'm trying to think of other stuff. Uh, is there anything I'm forgetting or anything uh, you would like to address the, the crowd with folks here? No, I think you covered it. Yeah, well, let's, let's keep the outro. Let's keep the outro going. Uh, Because my cats are fighting now in the room behind me. Uh, So uh, I've been Cole Ross. You can uh, watch me stream on Twitch at DuckFeedTV. I've been Dennis Furia. You can find me on Instagram at Deck of Wonders. I'm Jalachan in places. And I'm Ben Merkel. And stick around for some titles. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I have just variations on the one. So I have either dumb and bad or weird and bad because uh, <laughs> of those stories. Uh, but that, that, that's all that I, that's all that I got. Good. Dinner is severance. <laughs> Dinner is severance. Okay. I got it from karma. Okay. <laughs> Father, forgive me. I hate this game. <laughs> okay and that space too <laughs> okay uh dennis so yeah i had that space too as well i had that space too too i guess okay um and then in in your line of titles cole i i took the positive end of it and <laughs> uh captured airing towards good okay uh, erring towards good. Uh, ben, what you got? I have a Dennis combo here. I have raw dog your ears. No! <laughs> no. <laughs> and I have, I always pull out before answering the door. Wow. <laughs> I didn't say these things, okay? I just wrote them down. Yeah. <laughs> you just immortalized them. <laughs> um, I like that space too. That one goes by votes. And that was, that was a fun moment. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm fine with that. Yeah, and in, in, in going once, going twice. It made me hiss. <laughs> cool. All right. Um. Yeah. Well, I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to go. I'm going to get these cats some treats so they stop tearing each other apart. Mm-hmm. Uh, that j- sounds very important. Yeah. <laughs> uh, J- Jala. Uh, the Saturday at was it nine your time or uh, nine? Yes, your time? nine my time. Nine your time. So ten my time. Cool. Yes. All right. Yes. Sounds All good. Right. Cool. Good cool. night, everyone. Ben, I'll be playing SNKRX, I think. <laughs> All right. Cool. Take take care, everybody. All right. Bye. I'll call you or something. All right. <laughs> yeah. See you guys later. Bye. 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 Night night.